Was that it? Did my audio cut out? Can you hear me out there? Okay. Well, hello <laughs> to a very abrupt start to the Vaughn pod. Can you hear the guitar? I thought I'd, uh, why not try something I've never done before tonight on Vaughn pod? I'm not going to do the whole thing, but I thought I needed to pay some tribute and gouge away. You can gouge away, stay all day, if you want to. I'm going to bring him on while I'm singing, because I see he's rocking out. Gouge away, you can gouge away, stay all day, if you want to. Tonight on Von I think there's I think there's like a, a second delay that's killing oh, no. us here, but damn it. But have some marijuana if Missy, you got some Take question. Da, 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 da. Some marijuana. Yeah. <laughs> we tried. We tried. It's hard. There's always a lag. There's always a lag. You spoon my eyes, Jeff. That's right. Yes. Spoon my eyes. You break my arms. You spoon my eyes. <sighs> rubbing this bad charm with holy fingers. Gouge away. Gouge. You see my background today? Yes, I do. I, I love it. I love that poster. I think we just had a little adventure. Or at least I can say I had an adventure. We we just were we were just hanging out. <laughs> Kevin's like. Kevin's kind of like Carrot Top because he's always got props. I, <laughs> always, you know, I thought I had a top. box too, but <laughs> I didn't great. feel it. But, Moves. you know, I got my movie cut. What is this? <gasps> I didn't even know about this. Dude. It's a movie's employee tag. Should I Dude. put it on? That's one of the Kevin Smith's best things in his movies are the made up brands that he comes up with or just. Well, phenomenal. that's something we're definitely going to talk about because I feel like you've gotten some inspiration greatly. And what a <laughs> what a night to have an indie filmmaker on because of the subject matter that we just witnessed. Right. It's kind of perfect for this theme. Should we start? Should we start with that? Yeah, I think. I think what we have to do is start with some spoiler-free stuff. Well, sure. first week, I suppose I need to put on this fun. It says fun employee. Yes. I need to put this on. I'm not going to keep the hat on because it's stupid. Uh, I think it's <laughs> awesome, but I understand why you won't keep it on. It's, so plus it, it shades my light. You know, you can't see my eyes. Oh, I, I get it. You, you can never see my eyes. Yeah, but that's part that's, of your brand. That's part of my brand. I got to do that because I oh, might fall fuck, asleep. I didn't, I didn't put our picture in the slideshow. I might have to I'll reload during that. the during the show. And I don't want to see I don't want people to see my eyes half closed. That that might actually happen. Yeah, I, meat jelly. I hear you fell asleep. <laughs> In a podcast recently, I was I was just like this, except this was my eyes under talking about meat meat jello. I was talking about hell, I was dude? I was talking about um sa you know sa gelatin salads, which were the history of gelatin salads, which are fascinating. It's a fascinating topic. I learned a lot myself as we were doing as what I was doing um, the show. What made you want Crazy to stuff. talk about meat? Meat Jello, what is it? <laughs> That's the name of my new band, Green Meat Jello. Green Meat Jello. He might get angry. He might. He might sue. Well, his whole <laughs> career was stolen, and I can say that because I'm in his band. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. And no. I, I think I want to talk about that later too. I don't know if you want to do that off air or not, but I have an idea. Okay. Okay. We can whenever. And I don't mind it. talking about it on air. <laughs> All right, we'll we'll save it for off air. You tell me when yeah. we wrap the show. Well, we'll see if we we'll see if we get there. Right now, I'm stalling for time so I can send myself this picture so I can add it to our slideshow. I am 
I, you know what's funny? I shared the the stream and it didn't share to any of my pages for some strange reason. I oh no! It's all is. kinds of technical difficulties tonight. I I don't get it. I don't get uh, it. I just shared this everywhere and it's not showing up. I don't know. Really I would nice. check, but I'm not going to. <laughs> no, don't. I I used to do that. You know, I used to. My early shows were like that. I was constantly sharing, installing. It really, but it weighs down the show, man. It does. You just got to share it, put it out into the ether and just, and just start doing your thing. And whoever's going to watch is going to watch. That's what I've yeah, come to it's realize. Fine. I think we promoted it enough. There's a bunch, there's a couple of people here. I, I, I am, I have just want to say, I've said this to you off the air and I think I've even said it to you a little bit on the air. I am uh, so elated that you have embraced this format. Um, and for, I found out tonight, similar reasons in terms of like, yeah, finding right. great fulfillment in just getting it out there and just, you know, just doing something live. It's like half performance, it's half video and How's it that? lives forever and you just do it and it's out there and it's great. Yes. No editing because no editing <laughs> musically and I guess video wise, like I usually, I just work for other people doing videos, but in terms of my own projects, like this documentary, it's like, dude, that's not going to be done for at least two years, probably, you know? Right. So what am I going to put out in the meantime to pretend that I'm relevant, you know, and it's content. People don't even care. You know what? We're probably going to talk for longer than the movie we saw tonight. Right. And like people will eat that up. It's true. It's true. It's, that's just, that is how it and guess what? works. Okay. Now we can properly start our show. Excellent. Oh shit. Yes. Yeah. That's what I was doing. That was literally taken uh, a few hours ago. Yeah. Just tonight. Just tonight. like I would say six <laughs> six fifty three Eastern like, time. I love that. I love that. Kevin. Yeah. Kevin was like, so it happened. Kevin was basically like, hey, you want to do a show on Thursday? I was like, yeah, but I'm gonna go see Clerks three first. He's like, dude, you're seeing Clerks three. Where's that playing? And I was like, well, it's playing in select theaters. And he's like, and I was like, dude, you should come. And he's like, should I? I think I invited yeah. myself, but I'll no, take your side. No, of I the invited story. you. I invited you. And uh, no, you were just, you, I just, you were just surprised that Kirk's clerk split through his playing. And me, I'm yeah, I didn't like, even know. Man. I don't even know if I knew it was out yet. Dude, it's always, I knew he was there. touring it, but yeah, it came so, quick. Dude, it was, it, it was really fun to see you and it was fun to watch the movie. Yeah. And, you know, it was a uh, it was a good movie. I I enjoyed it. I think we talked yes, we, about. Yes, we saw Clerks three. Just yes. I literally got home about five minutes ago. <laughs> it was like, oh my god, uh, my brother. I talked to him before. That's cool. Nathan is here. Nate, dog. I can't see any comments. Oh, you know why? Because I have the private chat open. Oh, but well, that's okay. Comments. But I'm just because I'm displaying them. Oh damn! There's lots of comments. I hey, it looks like that guy, other guy in the photo. That's because it is. Thank ah! you. My Keller podcast is in the house <laughs> and giving me all the compliments. So yes, thank you very much. What's up, Mike? You too. I, I watched your uh, Encino Me-no? Man thing the other day. Uh, my Keller Mel. I love Encino Man. Yeah, That's dude. Great movie. Long time since I. I need to revisit that movie. Been a while. Yeah, I'm wondering if the Poly Shore movies really hold up but i feel like for me Son they will all. just because of we were we were in a very spe- specific era where like that is just nostalgia purely in, you know for us you're right you're absolutely right so, like even if they're terrible now like we're still gonna love it you're dude you're totally right i agree and really speaking do. of nostalgia how about that clerks three? <laughs> oh boy yeah was that, that just pure nostalgia or what <laughs> It really was, man. I mean, spoiler free, spoiler free. At the end of the free. show, I think we can go into some spoilers, but we'll like we'll do the show, and then if people want to hear our spoiler stuff, they can stay with us. I I really I had a lot of fun watching it. I knew it was, as you said, you know, it, it was probably going to be. Sorry, I just had sound in, in my headphones. Oh. Um. I, I knew that it was going to be like, you know, uh, that, that it might be a little incoherent and it kind of was the, um, uh, I didn't like where the story goes in certain aspects. It, it, I guess maybe I was trying to like guess where it was going to go and mm. what I had guessed was different from what we got. And 
I was just expecting a little bit more from such a, a wonderful meta setup. And um, I, they were just, they're all always in Kevin Smith movies. There are wonderful character moments. There are uh, funny jokes. There's, there's some funny, some great dialogue. And he's really good with details. He's like the best when it comes to details. So you always get really awesome pr production design, uh, all the fake brands and mm -hmm, all, mm -hmm. all sorts of callbacks. So yeah. callbacks of plenty, I think, without spoiling anything like yeah. this. I'm sorry that this movie is just a pure, basically nostalgia trip callback, which is, you know, I feel like I've stopped going into Kevin Smith movies expecting clerks and mall rats because you really can only do that once. Right. And I just kind of enjoy it for what it is. And he, you know, he's great at making really cheap movies very quickly. And this is another one. <laughs> I mean, I it's amazing how fast he puts them out once he's, you know, he's he's really streamlined everything. Yeah, for true. Yeah, exactly. I have to say there was one, there's a new character who's kind of, and he doesn't talk and he's not Silent Bob and he's kind of my favorite character just his expressions he's just like he's doing and he's almost kind of like the son-in-law of kevin smith so it's <laughs> kind of funny that he's doing like his own silent bob but it's like really good it's really really good the elias what they did with the elias elias character is my favorite which i, mean, I thought was a throwaway part. character but now you can't yeah, ignore so great so what they did with him was so great and just some sort of that was probably the most subverted expectation that ended up just being uh, wonderful. And yes, it is flawed. As Nate Dog says in the comments, it was flawed, but, you know, we had fun. We had fun. So. Yeah, I mean, I don't... It was another View Askew universe. You know, I feel like I was surprised at um, the level of drama that it brought. And I'm not sure if I enjoyed that or not. I There's think I'd need another history. watch to, like, really sink. let that sink in. Agreed. Agreed. I think I need to rewatch it. Well, we need to see the beginning of the movie too. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'll take blame for that. Can we talk about new Rochelle for a moment? Yes, sure. Go because ahead. that's spoiler free. <laughs> go ahead. Go go chat away about new Rochelle. I mean, I know how do it's you a... feel about it. How do you feel about new Rochelle? Never again. <laughs> Although, you know, I feel like it was just part of the adventure now because now I can talk about it on a, a, a podcast or whatever. Yeah, this it was is. just, you know, it, it was, uh, you, you, you had a, it was a journey to get to Clerks 3. And let me say, getting out, I heard my phone tell me at least once or tw probably even twice, stay in the right lane to keep left. Are you yeah. fucking kidding me? It's like, it's like bizarre world out there. But you want to know something? I would also say at the same time, um, I assume that anybody in, you know, uh, Westchester, or like the Nyack area would at least be familiar. That's why I assume that you had been. No. To New Rock. I, we I, have I, the I was, mall. We have the one of the biggest malls in America. We do not need do. New Rochelle. Palisades, but, you know, I don't know. It was uh, it, it was definitely uh, not fun to, to, to negotiate that parking garage, but. We can Dude. put behind us now. No, no, Sound I just, free. I think it's funny because first of all, I'm in this parking garage and I'm like, I think I could park here. So I guess right. I will. <laughs> and then I run to the theater, which I did not know there was an entrance to from the parking garage. I went out of the parking garage and around about three corners <laughs> to get there. Yeah. It's a, and it's then a I get to the, you know, thing where you pay for your parking space. Mm -hmm. And it took me, I should probably know my license plate by part, and that's on me. But I spent like five minutes scrolling through my phone trying to find a picture of my car to find the license plate so I could enter it into this machine for like $3. <laughs> like, that was not worth the time put into that system. <laughs> It's a, it was, a, I paid for four thing. hours just to make sure because four dollars is like, are you kidding me? I went through all of this for four bucks. It, it was, it, it was not a good system. And then I needed popcorn. So that's on me that we missed the first few minutes of the movie. Dude, it's going to be streaming everywhere in like yeah, yeah. two days. It'll be fine. Oh, is it really? Probably. I mean, it'll be right. out. I'm going to see it again. 
you know, it's, 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 I, I, I'm glad that we all went together. It was really, it was a funny. Yeah. Funny, I haven't funny been experience. to the movies with actual people in a while. And I was a little disappointed. You couldn't make the Guar uh, at Alamo theater, bro. I really, really, really wanted to go. I knew it was on shutter. I knew yeah. that one way or another, I was going to see it. And you know what it ends up being? It's like just it's just prioritizing, man. I just like yeah, you know, you course. go, ah, what could I do? What could I not? Yeah, do? it wasn't your local one, it was in Brooklyn. So it was in Brooklyn, man. And it, it was, was the it was city was flooding that day, so I was almost late for that one too. I I went to my first like real show that like I have like in over two years. And That's like, nuts. I've literally not been in a sh to a show since the Pixies 2019 in December of 2019. Wow. I've yeah, been to so like, many shows. I cannot relate to you. Dude, I, I went, was it you know, Fishbone? I, yeah, it was Fishbone. I, I, went I didn't to a know Fishbone was playing. Where no, did I didn't they know play? you liked, I didn't know you liked Fishbone. I would have said, come with, I was trying oh. to get, dude, I had an extra ticket. No, I, it wasn't my ticket. My friend, Bob, yeah. go. he said, he said, find someone to take my ticket. I was wait, like, where I, was it? And isn't it funny how you always someone who's like I, here they can have the ticket, but they're not going to like go out of their way to like find someone. They like want you to find the person. I'm like, yeah. what do you want me to find the person, dude? I was like, well, I, I guess because so if they're going to go time. with you, you know, it would be first choice would be someone you choose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. I was like, you know, I'm like, I, I'm like, I, dude, I roll the, sh I roll solo to shows like my whole life. Like, I don't care to go. I don't. Yeah, care dude, I'm, that's my norm. I mean, I'll always, right, almost yeah. always know someone in the room. Anyways, right. so it, it was a great show too, and it was, it yeah, it was literally my first one in in two years, and I wow. like the 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 uh the effort to like drive into the city on Sunday night. Where was it at uh, Le Passion Rouge? Oh Rouge. wow! Yeah, cool venue. Really like that venue a lot. I'm um, surprised they played there. That's like not a place I would imagine a punk kind of show. I'm very not surprised. I'm. I mean, I'm very unsurprised that they played there because, you know, I mean, they play like the Brooklyn Bowl and stuff. But that like, makes sense to me. Yeah, but like they need like a stage that like doesn't go up too high because Angelo like just will jump into the crowd and like of everybody course. was stage diving, dude. That the audio, the vibe of the audience was so great. Like it was, it was, it was rad, dude. It was a really rad show. They played for two hours oh, and fifteen man. minutes. I'm I, not I really well versed in their music, but I that's you like don't have to be exactly. I need to see to them be. live. Although they always play the hits. If you like some of the hits. You'll be a happy. Can I don't know their deep cuts. You know, yeah. they play some deep. I don't cuts even really know the hits. I mean, oh look, I finally got my do, banners just listen, on. Listen, just listen to, uh, just listen to Essential Fishbone on Spotify. It's like, that, oh, that, I have. I've I've listened to it all. I watched list, the documentary, dude. and in fact, that list. I sort of met Angelo. I've met Angelo several times. He's very approachable and very like you'll always see him around. He's very accessible guy. Um, it, he he's really the, he's the man, dude. He's he's awesome. Yeah, I I wish. Okay, so I okay, I got a banner up. Yeah, yeah, that's what's up. Is that cool. Well, that's your cool. name is YouTube slash from us, anyways. Yeah, that's fine. Oh, yeah, I do that on purpose for that specific yeah. reason. But thank you for including that as well. If you want to change it to something clever, no uh, pressure. I got it on the banner now. I, I like it where it is because it's very okay. visible right cool. next to me. But yes, thank um, you. For sure. Yeah. So uh, when I went to LA filming my documentary, right, I made sure to be at. The Green Jello Vision show three, you know, every Saturday. Right, right, right. Because they do which, that. Yeah, which which is now WTF dash TV, and they do it every every week, three hours free on YouTube. It's it's um, inspiring, and I don't know if you know this, but when they first started the show, this was during the pandemic, and Angelo's band. Not Fishbone, the Dr. other Mad one. Vibe. Dr. Mad Vibe. They were the house band, so they would just play on the show every week. Oh my god, I would kill to have been there. Yeah, and, just and it's that. like, I mean, it's like in a, this dude's living room, you know? So, anyways, 
they did not they were not the house band by the time i was got there but right. he came in to do uh, a guest spot with the featured band that night so i was there yeah, was, i didn't even know he was going to play and i really wanted they dude I, I think it was my first night there they already put me on to work at camera they're like hey our camera guy's god kevin get up there i'm like i'm on vacation man but you know you're I was called on to duty with Bill with Bill Man Speaker. I got yes, I was a, a member and always will be. So I got to work, and so I got to film Angelo play, and I shook his hand. But I was like, oh, after the show, I want I'm going to meet Angelo more. This is going to be awesome. And when the show's over, and he is already gone, he is out of there. Okay, so I was like. I guess I, I don't know how to describe this. It was kind of like in the entourage of somebody at, at uh, what's it called? Um, the punk fest. What is it called? The, uh, the kid, the kitty one. Um, uh, the kitty one, the not punk. the kitty one. You know what I mean? The, the friggin', uh, I will when I figure out what, uh, why is the name escaping me right now? But Kevin, what's his face? He warped to warp to her. <laughs> I, I was with like, I don't know. I was with somebody. I would we say were, the corporate one. The corporate one. We were like, yeah. we were walking all over the place and we, we bumped into the guys from Bad Religion and Bouncing. So like, we were just like, we got to go everywhere. And I, cool. I was like the guest of a guest. So I was like sure. with the, the the party or whatever, I guess you would call. And who do I see just working, just working warp Tour as like a hand, stage hand? Just nobody, nobody's bothering him. Nobody even knows who he is fucking angelo moore i go yo angelo moore and he was like so stoked that like I knew <laughs> who he was he's like eating lunch by himself like over like to the side there's yeah. the bouncing souls i'm going yo angelo that's angelo moore. why is he sitting by himself let's go sit with angelo and I, we didn't sit with him but it was just he was just that's uh cool. i'm sure you could have it was just so random and i was like he just probably picked up that job because you know the you know it's it's what's sad here's the sad reality about fishbone i've I've come to realize this is not my observations. I think I actually heard this on Fat Mike's Fat Mike. Um, mm. But I think great it's like name a, for a show, by the way, great name for a show. And he had uh, we've been talking a lot about Finn McKinty lately, and he had Finn McKinty on. And that's why I was listening. Wait, who's to Finn it. McKinty? Uh, the punk rock NBA guy. He's the guy that I aspire to be that I want to be doing full time on youtube stuff, is he in a kind of oh guy. okay is he in a band oh no no he's not i'll send you his channel i think you're gonna okay. really like it it's it's right up your alley as, does he have mine. guests or is he just he has one... gas he does videos like you'll see what he's all about and gotcha. um i guess he's people don't he's a bit abrasive and people that like watch my show have said like yeah you know he's kind of whatever it doesn't matter in any case well fat mike is abrasive so is Fat Mike. So yeah. Fat Mike is talking with Finn. They were talking about fish. Fishbone came up, and it was just basically like the the blatant sad reality is, you know, Fishbone were contemporaries to the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Oh yeah, and they those bands if not a huge influence on them. A huge influence on the Red Hot Chili Peppers as well. And I mean that's a thing. Fishbone is a band's band, and I know you know what that means. It's like yeah, these are the yeah. bands that aren't you know they have their dedicated fan base, but they don't have mainstream success but anybody who's in a successful band reveres and worships them so you're like yeah double I'm sure no doubt right sublime. No doubt, sublime of course sublime used to cover party of ground Zero, i'm sure but, so you know um like if you if you know like if you know that band you're extra cool basically is yeah. what it is and the sad reality is they made no money. Angelo's living at his mom's house. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I mean, well, well, that's that might be because of the lawsuit from when the person staged that. They they owe oh, hundreds really? of thousands of dollars. Uh, oh man, they lost a lawsuit. It was kind. Of, it was all bogus. Was this man. recently? Because it wasn't recently. It was about ten years ago, I think. And that's I why did watch the documentary somewhat recently, but I know it's kind of old by now. Well, the sad truth is you're never going to see Fishbone stop touring for this reason. It's not because they they necessarily want to, although I think they do want to and they like doing it, but mm -hmm. they do it because they are uh, it, it sort of in they're indebted to paying off this debt, which is just ter it's terrible, dude. Um, but the, the reality is, is that like. Like the he's mainstream... known for jumping into the crowd, I know, but the reality is, is that the mainstream 
audiences don't like fishbone because they're black dude straight up that's the truth they embrace the chili peppers because they're white middle america is white they're like yeah chili peppers we love them it's sort of the fishbone, same with bad brains same thing with bad brains and that's like and you know i'm not i hate to even make it racial but it is it, mm -hmm. it kind of is sure and it's sad because fishbone are pound for pound every ounce as good if not better than the red hot chili peppers and the red hot chili peppers are multi-platinum in the hall of fame and it's because record companies and radio stations and everybody were willing to put the bucks behind them and push them and market them to markets that were going to embrace a white band as opposed to a black band especially in the 80s and the 90s um maybe a fishbone had gotten their start now although the, the market is way different now well now it's like you better be in music to for a passion because right, unless you're like right. the top one percent of musicians like you're not making shit you're gonna pay a lot of money into that but even in that Wait, way wait, Fish don't, don't buy my new record <laughs> yeah but even in that way fishbone are still in the top one percent in the sense that they have a loyal dedicated fan base that allows them to play shows not just all over the u.s but they play shows uh internationally they don't release new music because there's no money in it, but there's yeah. money in touring. Otherwise, they wouldn't tour. Um, you know? Well, I hope so. they to keep touring because now I need to see them. I mean, I've been wanting I've been wanting to see them. I didn't know they I were will playing. I tell you, I always see them every time they're in town. I always go to the show. I will let you know the next time that they're yeah, in I'm town. Yeah, I'm a little disappointed in, in myself. I had no idea. I had no idea you didn't like you liked them. I'm always I mean, you know, I'm always I'm always cut hitting. I'm not. Like, I don't hey, have any of their out. albums, but like. They're like a bucket list band. Like you have to, I got to see Fishbone. Are you kidding me? That's well, like, punk you know, rock royalty. Well you know, music well enough that you would want to see Fishbone. And so. did you know that he used to live with Bill Manspeaker? That I did not know. I did not know yeah. that connection. Check makes this sense. out. LA, LA connection, you know? Well, that's actually the house. So when we got dumped out of our tour bus in 2008, yeah. it was at this house that they had just bought. I guess they were moving in that night as we were pulling in. Oh my God. So I slept on their couch the first night they were ever there. Whoa. Eventually, check out who was living there at the same time Bill from Green Jello. Right. Carrot from the Chicken Heads. Hunter Jackson, the co founder of Guar. And Angelo. So you knew Hunter Jackson way before you had him. No, I Jello. never met him until last summer. But. He's been in my orbit for a long time, yeah. Right, because he's in Hollywood. Gotcha. So he's a, he's he knows all the Hollywood dudes. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Um, but <laughs> you know, that's that's usually how it goes. People are in your periphery; they're in your orbit, and you just circle their orbit until you collide with them. Speaking <laughs> of someone I collided with. I, I, you can't see it. No, I'm going to, I'm going to circle it back to the, the Kevin Smith thing. Um, because we've gone a half an hour already and we haven't even talked about anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, soon I'm going to ask you, um, to introduce yourself. Uh, my name is, no, no, wait, 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 I want to, I don't know if you can see it back here, but this is actually autographed by Jay. And oh. I, ha I have a picture that's a close-up of it because I know you probably couldn't see it. Um, and the story is, it's not a crazy story, but me and my brother and probably one of his friends at the time went to, went on a pilgrimage to Jay and Bob's secret stash. I believe- In Red Bank, right? In in Red Bank. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, I, think sure. it, I think they moved maybe, but I think this is the original location because- this was in the 90s. Uh, I think Chasing Amy was his latest movie. So we went to the store and I bought this poster and Jay was just working the counter. It would have been 90. It probably would have been 97, 98. That seems right in the pocket. Yep. Yeah. So that's when I met Jay there. because he was behind the counter ringing up my fucking poster. It's great. So it was like, uh, do you Ooh. ask the do you ask your barista to you know sign your merchandise that's kind of weird but also like how could you not right one in rome one in red bank dude was just working the store like a regular old dipshit employee he kind of was he kind of was i know that, that's that sad too time. so oops oh, there, there you go is. 
Kevin, thanks for stopping at the stash. The stashes. Jason Fat Buzz Muse. I love it. Yes, right I on Jason it. Lee's leg. Beautiful. What's Shannon Doherty's face in the picture? Oh, Mallrats. That's a classic. I love it. I say that. Well, I, I tend to say that about a lot of movies, apparently, but Clerks and Mallrats and Chasing Amy, that trilogy. The New Jersey that, trilogy. You know, everything after that, like I said before, is icing on the cake, you know? Like yeah. that was the holy trinity of his movies. And um, as long as he's still around to make another one, like, why not? I'll go see it. It's not going to be the dude. same, but same dude. I think I'm sure he's been trying to get the Mallrats like series going, I think. And I don't know if that's probably going to be the next thing. Mallrats. Is that it? I think so. I don't know. Time will we'll tell. see. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, Jeff. Hey, what's up? Um, who are you? What do you do? Oh, oh that's my logo. That's my yeah. old logo. Um, Is it your where, old logo where you, already? Where did you, you get that? Still... Did I send that to you? Where did you get no, that? It's, no, I think I... It's got to be on my stole website. Stole it maybe? from your website. Why wow. did you update it? That. Yeah, well, I, 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 if you look behind me, you can see I put my face in the Let's moon see. now. Oh. I'm in the moon. Oh. You can... Hold on. Yeah, yeah, some things you sent me and some things I stole from your website and stuff. So I took a photograph of myself and I was like, I, I need to make this because right now I just have taken something that's in public domain, but I want it to be a little bit more from So I better put my face in it to make it more from So that's why. So I was like, which is funny because I always wanted a logo where an eyeball was being assaulted in some way because I was always you and your life. eyeballs, my manifesto. Well, you know, it's funny. Gouge away. Yeah. Not only the name of the, my latest movie, but my, my first feature film, my first short film that I ever made that I ever like considered really? to be my short film was called gouge away. And then That's a little preview. Well, what's funny. What's weird is that literally almost 20 years later without even putting any thought into it i logically was like i should call the new version of this movie gouge away and then i was like wait a minute this is not the first this would not be the first time and it just seemed really full circle so tell know. me about the original gouge away and uh, was it any was it any bit similar to the current gouge away? Actually, the guy who's in the original gouge away is also in the current gouge away because we made uh, the guy who plays uh, Whiskers, the the gangster guy. Mm -hmm. He's okay. in the original gouge away, and it's just about a guy who takes a drink and murders someone and then uh, kills himself. And uh, you know, to the song "Gouge Away," playing it was just absolute it was literally me like getting a video camera and just trying to figure out how to like try and uh do something what, with what it. kind of camera were you using at the time sony ha dv handy cam and uh, i used that thing for a long for about two or three years it felt at the time those two or three years felt like a decade but like now looking back it was about two or three years and uh yeah, I just used to shoot on, you know, the the the, the tried and true story. I just sh used to shoot on it constantly, try to make just trying to make stuff on DV tape. And now, you know, we have DSLRs and we can get a really nice looking image. However, I think the DSLR is so played out that I almost kind of want to go back and and dust off one of those old DV cameras and try and find uh, a reason to use that aesthetic because I think it'll be more appealing to the eyeball go to back to vhs man if you're gonna go way retro you know i you know i like dv is more stable than yeah, vhs and you still get that vhs vibe without it actually being vhs so i think i would i would it would, it would be easier to shoot dv actually hdv but you know yeah but yeah i i loved i loved shooting all that stuff and then fast forward here we are shooting yes. gouge away on a black magic cinema camera and this poster is this poster is actually from uh ripped off from a frankenstein poster that's frankenstein oh. and uh i needed of uh nathan from the genre blast film festival said hey i need a poster and i wanted to hire somebody i don't have the funds for it yet but when i do i wanted to ha uh, commission someone to do uh, an ensemble poster like we did for romeo's distress yeah. And, i'll show that later 
yeah, you've seen that an ensemble poster. I want to do that again, but I needed a quick pet poster. So I was like, I'll just do this. And so I took a picture of the mask and then Photoshopped it. That that's actually a cell phone picture of hmm. the actual mask. And I just sort of wow. painted over it and dropped it in there. So it I never almost, would have thought. Yeah, it looks pretty seamless. I'm pretty happy yeah. about that. So, but that Get was a Jeff real for your graphic picture. design work. Oh, uh, I, I I go about it oops. such a backwards way. Oh yeah, that's the original one. Yeah. So I don't know. Do you want to tell? Oops, that's not the view I wanted. Hello. Uh, yeah. What was the or like the origin story here? The origin story was wash. Okay, so I was following up Romeo's distress with Wash Away, and Wash Away His was first uh, feature film, which I will we'll talk about that in reverse. Sure, sure. Um, wash Away was supposed to be a psychotronic revenge thriller, uh, which is just a fancy way of just you know saying like a genre film. Instead of saying genre film psychotronic, I like that term psychotronic better. Um, it's kind of like, you know, I don't know what trash. it means, but it sounds cool. You know what? I'm going to hold on. I'm going to get the definition for you right now so I can say it. I am always, you, you know me, I'm always looking up definitions of things. We need a Jamie. We we really do. Psychotronic. Although I'm so done with that, dude. But that's psychotronic is like de de denoting or relating to a genre of movies, typically within science fiction, horror or fantasy theme that were made on a low budget or poorly received by critics. So I kind of wanted to, like, do something in that vein, but as a revenge thriller. And the tone was very serious. And it was about a guy who the, the whole the whole plot was basically like this guy who uh, was was wronged when he was younger and <laughs> then um yes it is hard to spell who was wronged when he was younger finds the guy who wronged him and the guy doesn't remember him and basically nefariously takes his revenge on someone who doesn't realize the 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 person that they victimized in the first place and it uh it basically crescendos in in some serious some serious violence that it was never, I was never able to film, but it was really violent, really uh, disturbing. Well, violence. the new one's pretty violent. Do you think so? I feel like it's not violent enough. Hmm. I mean, uh, I, I kind of cringed a little bit, you know. That's I good. mean, it's cringe. like, uh, obviously, I know you don't have big blood budget, but, you know, for what, like, just conceptually, you're just kind of like, Ugh, what the fuck? That's good. That, especially that, and i'm not going to give anything away but especially the end <laughs> with you didn't um, really you thought that you thought that was good well, you thought that was gory it's i don't want to say what he does to this yeah. person's body <laughs> but let's just say it, it's pretty gory good that's what but, I, you know that one was more of like a oh yeah holy shit right yeah you're kind of rooting for it you're like yeah do it do it yeah <laughs> yeah but like some of the earlier scenes where he's just sort of like the other violent scenes you know i don't yeah. want to say any too much but it was just conceptually you're like ooh. well yeah it's it's very cold-blooded it's like yeah. very clinically cold-blooded you're right you're right and the end is more fantastical and yeah happened, you know i like my guar and it's more in that vein right the ending is guar and the er earlier it's more i don't know it's like dexter or something it's very right uh, exactly uh, there you go yeah that's to tonally you have totally several different. you say have several tones of violence in this movie <laughs> yes yes i do um wash away's tone was more like the tone earlier in the film and as you can see, this was the mask. So the, the mask that's in that gouge away poster, that is the Oedipus mask. And the Oedipus mask is what is it, it's a motif throughout the original film Wash Away. I was going to ask if the mask had more to do with the previous movie. Um, it did. Hold on one second. Let me get it. Oh, yeah. We're getting some props. He's learning from me. What? Should I get the guitar back? Oh no, he's back already. There it is. Let me uh, full screen you. That is a. I see that you made that. That's a creepy well, ass mask. What were you saying? I, I said I think you're in green jello now. <laughs> yes. So this mask, which is made out of clay and the original script, you can see the script pages oh, that were wow. paper mache into the mask. 
So the entire mask is made out of scripts, actually. And um, the original idea, Wash Away, is basically a, an Oedipus Rex story, sort of, or thematically. And so I needed an Oedipus I think I read mask. that in school once. Oh, it's the best. It, dude, it's deep shit, man. I mean, it's like the self-fulfilling prophecy, like all this stuff. So I was trying to weave all of that into Wash Away. And then what happened was we shot, you know, spent about two years developing it on and off saving money developing it um i got an llc which was great because you know now no matter what i spend i can write off as oh a yeah i've been doing that for years yeah so that was very beneficial because the first movie romeo i just just made out of my pocket it wasn't very expensive but you know mm -hmm. money is money and i just yeah. realized that and I, I'm not going to go. The we're not. Route. We're indie filmmakers or, and artists. And I don't really want to go the crowdsourcing, the traditional crowdsourcing route, because as you know, it's a full time job in and of itself. It really and is. I just I would rather wait and plan and, and put that energy into the movie than always be spending energy like trying to get people to donate and stuff. It's it's tough, man. It's and tough. yeah, I, I you know, I, I understand why I understand why you do it. I understand why people do it. I, it's just something that for me personally, I'm like, I, I would rather know any other option. If someone if I had a benefactor executive sure, producers, bro. I would not do it. <laughs> so I've decided I decided a long time ago that for the time being or for the foreseeable future that I would just be happy to make micro budget films that I could finance myself mm -hmm. and own myself. I own my yeah. movies outright. These are my movies. They don't belong to anybody else but me for whatever for whatever that's worth. You know, even if it's 100 percent of zero, it's still 100 percent. Yeah. And, you know, that's it's 100 percent your debt. <laughs> Yeah, but you know what? That's how catalogs, you know, you develop a catalog and if somebody sees value in it someday, they may buy it or they may want to license it from you. So exactly. Yeah. Um, but but I. Uh, what, why was I? Oh, yeah. So I had spent two years developing and saving the money and saving up some money and getting the LLC together. And finally, March of 2020, we decided to start shooting and we didn't. Even what a have great to month to start something. <laughs> We were like, finally, this is it. And this weekend went very well. I took on additional production responsibilities because I I could not afford to hire a sound person. So I figured out a way that I could record the sound myself. Yeah, I have some shooting. pictures of that, I think. Yeah, they're all it's all in that that thing. And, you know, I was like, it, listen, if I'm listening to the sound we'll get and to I'm them the later. editor. Yeah. If I'm listening to the sound and I'm the editor, then like I should be okay. Because if Speaking I hear what editing, it sounds like, I have some editing photos. Oh my god! Yeah, that was that that was the assembly that I just finished, or the the, the whatever the picture lock that I had just finished, and I think I was just diving into color correction. Ugh. That's that's the mix. That's seventeen hundred. That's one thousand seven hundred sound files that were all mixed together in about a week no about five days jesus one, and one of those days was a 36 hour session straight <laughs> yeah i believe it because i'm sure i've been in similar situations you listen dude i mean musically like my tracks are... right every song is like a hundred tracks for me I can't that that would make me not that that right there is probably about 10, 12 tracks. I couldn't imagine 100. I just. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm a I layer. It's like I have yeah. the capability, so I use it. And so my music is very dense. You do like you do like layer like 15 guitars on top of each other, make it all nice and thick. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah like little leads, you know, acoustic, everything electric. Gets, everything gets its own track. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, I'm a little, because I, because I have my hands in every part of the process, I am a little disorganized in that way. Like I'll put everything, you know, everything's like dialogue is all going to be on top here and mm -hmm. sound effects are somewhere in the middle and, uh, atmosphere and, and music is going to be somewhere down here. Um, but I mostly, because I know where everything is, I have such an intimate knowledge that I just don't worry about some of those organizational bits that you would need to do if you were doing it with someone else and um you know basically what happened was i was doing wearing a lot of hats we shot 
almost it was I think the precise number was 18 percent. I always tell people it was 20. It was 18 percent of the of Washaway script, all of the interior Stanley scenes. And then the world shut down because of the pandemic and the movie died for uh, numerous reasons. I'm not going to list here, but m- just about every single one of them was my fault. Oh. I would say seven out of 10 of the reasons were were my fault in some way. And I slowly just kind of detached, you know, the world was like in a bad place and like, it's just hard to like care about something when like the world is sort of ending. Right. And so I did, you know, it's funny. They say like, you know, giving up, giving up on something um, is when you just stop doing it and you walk away and that's the end. But, yeah, it's but not... creatively, you started doing more YouTube. So well, I think that, it, that's in, was, in, that in another avenue, like you, like, you yes. exploded. What what happened? I never let that spark die. I just knew I couldn't do that thing. Yeah. So I pushed all of my energy into something and poured the same amount of energy into that. And that's what you have to do when you reach a wall in creatively in life. You don't let the spark die. You just you just detour. And then eventually, sometimes there's a shortcut back to the other side. And in this case, it was waiting a year, being super bummed out that I never completed the project. And then one day, like a like an epiphany, like a like lightning bolt in the shower, I realized if I can't, I'll never be able to tell the movie that I want to tell. So why not just tell the sequel? And so theoretically, hypothetically, the script of Wash Away, which nobody will ever read or see is pretty much works with gouge away most there's a couple of things that have been tweaked for the gouge away story mm-hmm. i i wouldn't call gouge away a true sequel it's a continuation gouge away is a continuation of wash away uh so i guess that counts as a sequel it has the same characters some of the same characters there's three or four characters from gouge from wash away that wind up in gouge away and what happened was the guy who who was my he was like my assistant on wash away matt great great guy who really invaluable team player um matt was doing an in camera cameo for the movie within the movie so when they're watching family time machine yeah i was going to ask you about that <laughs> okay so family time machine came that's bob rose shout out to my friend bob rose who did the what's up bob What's up, Bob? He did the second unit directing for that. He came up with that on his own. I said, Bob, I want you to fill 15 seconds on the screen for me with whatever you want. And he just the way that I came to you with something. I was like, yeah, fill the screen with 15 seconds. And he did. And originally what was there was all the stuff with my grandmother, who's bad Nana. So bad Nana. Okay, is that's actually, grandma. Yeah, that's my 92 year old grandma. My grandma's she, turning 100 this month. God bless her and cherish it, man. Just <laughs> we're just, throwing her a big party. So uh, that's wonderful, man. Enjoy, soak it up and enjoy it. And <laughs> I'm, I'm happy. I'm really happy for you. We, we're a rarefied breed that we get to have these adult relationships with um, ancient people, right? You know, it's pretty cool. I mean, your grandmother, like my grandmother, lived through so much shit. And you know what my grandmother said to me before she died? She said, <clears throat> I said, Nana, what's the hardest thing you ever lived through? Because you 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 saw the Great Depression. You saw World War II. You saw the J- Kennedy assassination, 9-11. She said, this pandemic is the hardest thing I ever wow. lived through. She said that if World War II happened today we would lose or at least we would be severely hampered because nobody would contribute to the war effort. Nobody would, because back in World War II, they had everybody donating scrap metal. You had to ration your shit. Yeah, we would just be fighting about it on Twitter. We would would just be saying, it's my right to have my gasoline. Meanwhile, there's a madman taking over the world and we would just be fighting about why we can't have more sugar you know, more than like one day a week. And she was right, man. I thought that was one of the most profound things she's ever said to me in my whole life. And it was shortly before she it was about two months before she died. And um, uh, yeah, dude, it was I, she loved acting and she's in R- Romeo's distress as well. Yeah, Dude, you have her doing some foul shit. 
I do. Or man. saying some foul shit in yeah, this but, case. But it's not, but I don't have her saying it. That's her. Yeah, that's, that's hilarious. My <laughs> that's my Nana. I didn't write that. She I, I figured that you would just like let her go. I, I said Nana, unleashed. this is Nana I unleashed. Said, I said, Nana, this is the scene. You're a bad, you're like a really, really like bad mafia boss who's just like the baddest around, you know, like you just you're ruthless and you're 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 cold blooded and you have a filthy fucking mouth. Yeah. Well, I mean, she already did. Yeah. And so I said, Nana, I was like, Nana, just like, you know, this guy, he doesn't have your money. So just like say the worst things you can think to say to him. And then when the, what that ended up, here's talk about creativity, like changing. That was just supposed to be like 45 seconds in inside of a, mo a movie within a movie that they're watching on the TV. Oh, and that turned into the lead of the movie and this relationship yes that's when we shot that scene and that's that was the very first stuff we shot for wash away and that was nana's last stuff that she ever shot for me um and uh she was great man she just she was a natural actress who never acted and mm. there she is which what she was the best she was really she had a little perch at the towards the end she started putting a little purple in her hair mm, uh which nice. i always thought was kind of great and um she she loved she was uh she was a ham she loved, oh yeah you could really tell she loved it she loved doing it and she sometimes would be gr grudgingly pretend that she didn't like doing it but she loved it she loved doing it and um she always say let me see it let me see what it looks like and then she would have a laugh at herself and uh you know i have all this like cell phone video and i know that whatever i do next nana will make an appearance somehow mm -hmm in the background somewhere in some way, shape sure. or form. And uh, it's just funny how that little in camera joke ended up being somewhat like a, like a huge chunk of the plot in the new movie, but that's what happens. You have to learn when, when, when bad things happen, you have to think outside of the box and figure out how you can keep going. Even if it's not going to be the best, even if it's not what you meant to tell, you just have to figure out how to keep moving and complete the work. And I can say that I did that. So I feel good about that, you know? And you premiered it at a, a film festival. Tell me about yes. this. Yeah, that was, World I mean, premiere. that was really special. So a year prior, Nathan uh, Ludwig at the Genre Blast Film Festival, he's the uh, festival director. Nathan, um, uh, you know, we, we, oh, you know what? I had something, I had something playing there. I forgot what it was. It was some short. Cause you know, I'll just submit a short. I just want to mm -hmm. su support the fest, you know? Uh, so I submitted a short and we, we went down there. It's a great time. It's like filmmaking summer camp. It is such a, you see so many great films and Nathan said, so when are you going to do another film? And I was like, well, I'm actually working on it. I don't know when it's going to be done. I'm trying to get this thing. He's like, well, I want it for genre blast. I was like, really? And, it, and I, he was like, yeah. And I was like, okay, well, if I can get it done within the year, it's yours. You have the premiere. I, I had no festival plan for this film at all. It was just, it was just, I just wanted to complete it. So we did. And we asked, we won a bunch of nominate. We got, we got a bunch of nominations. Which was so and you won awesome. something, right? Oh, wait, we first won, I have, I saw this. Yes. This the gouge fun. away. Yeah. The gouge away. Let's see. What is prize. it? Loaded flies, fries, Lo no bacon. Did you have any say in this or did uh, no, you try it? No, they just made it. I uh, tried it and uh, it was great. You know, um, you know, it was it was just really cool because he was like he was encouraging me this whole time. Like, how's it going? Are you going to keep doing it? And then finally, about six months out, I was like, hey, I am really seriously close to finishing this thing. I have like a couple more shooting days. I have some of it assembled. It was not a movie mm -hmm. six weeks before it premiered. It there was no movie. And in six, at and, the end of that six weeks, we had a movie and it was very touch and go. Every single shooting day was life or death. If we didn't get the shooting day, that was it. We weren't going to get make it in on time. It wasn't going to happen. This was being made at this point. There was no money. Uh, the whole budget was probably about two thousand dollars. There was no money at this point, though. There was nothing. I was I was running on whatever memory cards I had and the camera gear that I own and uh just using the software that i had and just making it all happen and um 
And we, I kept in touch with Nathan. I was like, I think this is going to happen. And he's like, when can you have me uh, an assembly for me or, or, or a cut? I said, dude, there's no movie yet. I was like, <laughs> he's like, he, I was like, what's the latest you would need the movie by? He's like, July 31st. I'm like, holy shit. Our last shooting day was July 16th. Okay. So if you could imagine. So by July 31st, Nathan had an assembly cut of the film. And then and which at what point did you did you uh wrote it was me pretty it was pretty assembled. It was it was the, the, the movie was complete, it was just unmixed, it was uncolor corrected, and there was missing sound design. But he had the movie, he had mm. the movie in hand uh by the 31st. That's and, impressive. Um he he watched uh they watched the movie and they accepted it. And then I literally had a month to do the sound design, color correction, and sound is that mix. where is that where I came in? That's when I had contacted you. Well, we had talked or something. Yeah. You mentioned something about music. And, you know, the truth That's is. That's my like, whole pitch, man. Like my whole new album's like, hey, check it out. I can do all these different things. You know what? I, I honestly, you. I, I just want to, I, I love collaborating people or like having people put their art into my art. Mm -hmm. And, totally. um, you know, I'll, even if I like don't have, in this case, I very much needed a, a specific piece of music, but like you know i i'm so open to like like amending certain things story wise if it means that i could bring somebody in and have them do something creative or as i did with bob rose I was like bob i have this amount of time i trust your aesthetic i love what you do i'm not i have no i have no instructions for you fill the 45 seconds for the tv and oh Bob yeah did. right the family the commercial on the tv and yeah. the time machine it's 15 seconds with 45 seconds of trail off of audio and that's Here's, who are all yeah. of those people in there do you even know who they are those are all stock that's all stock footage. is it all stock footage? the names are are names of filmmakers who directed a film that i did a segment for called the transformations of the Transformations. oh i have Dr. that jenkins I was going to ask you about that just because it looked interesting. Okay, so all of the names on, on Family Time Machine are the directors of the transformations of the transformations of Dr. Jenkins. It's here somewhere. Yeah, I added, we all I added yeah, a lot of not. slides today. There it is. Oh, there it is. Yeah, that, that was a nutty project. That was a pandemic movie, a feature film. We were all given segments to direct ourselves. That's so I clever. did everything for my segment and submitted it. That also played at genre blast. And uh, it was, that was special this year or last year. No, that was the previous year when I had spoken to Nathan. So I guess at the end of the day, I did go with, with a feature film to genre, even though it wasn't my feature film, I was at genre blast, the feature film. And then, and then in between that, I actually shot a feature film on my cell phone for the bizarro land sick and wrong film debacle in 72 mm. hours we we did oh, yeah. a documentary uh called am i demon jack and i and jack who's all who was in gouge away both gouge away films and uh that was a crazy production thing because we literally wrote shot i wrote shot directed edited mixed and uploaded that film in 70 hours it was a marathon and uh yeah that was a lot of fun yeah so, I, i've not participated in those but i've kind of been around it a dude, little bit you should you really should it's a lot of fun it's happening next july yeah. we'll see out. we'll see uh, i've yeah, never made like a like a, a narrative piece like it's not really but you but you could i'm not saying because... i couldn't yeah i actually would yeah. love the opportunity but i'm not gonna like I'm not going to write it myself. Like, you know, I'm just not, that's not you, really you my need thing. need to be motivated. And that's why that's so good because you have 72 hours to do it. It'll motivate yeah. you to do something. And you're working like in like a, like a time chamber to get it done. It, right. It's I get really the, like the thrill of it. Yeah. It's, it's thrilling. It, it really is. Especially when you're trying to make something that's 70 minutes long. And, uh, and we did, we did. I can't say that it's good, but it's yes. That's the award we won. So you won something. So yeah, that was that was really special because we were nominated five times. We did not win any of the nominations, but you know what? What's the most what? What's most important is that a the project was completed. B that it was selected. That's the win. That's yeah, the victory. Okay, getting nominated. That's just that's a I tip mean of the this hat, is man. pretty cool. 
this, this guy. Well, this is this is even this is even more than this is even a, a beyond all of that because this is the Independent Spirit Award. There was no nominations for this. This was awarded for all of the efforts, and you know, I was just so taken aback. I wasn't expecting it at all. Uh, you know, I was really, you know, I, I just I made a long Facebook post about this, and I really do believe it. It's true in that it's good to lose, man. It's good to like not win things. It's like a really great way to get like some humility and like mm -hmm. practice good sportsmanship. I always and... say go out and get 10 no's, you know, like try to get. Yeah. A no. Yeah. And so to get both to get both like I did. I, first of all, he got the nomination. So that's already that's great. But to then not win and be tempered and be like, OK, OK, that's like that's cool, man. Like, you know, uh, everything that won was deserving of what it won that beat us out on. Like I was I was stoked for all those filmmakers. But then to receive an award. Here's what I've learned. Awards. That's just the byproduct of hard work, man. That's the bottom line. Do the hard work because you want to complete the thing. Anything yeah. that comes as a result is a byproduct that's earned. You earned it. You don't do something for the award. You don't do something and then expect an award. You do something. And then if you get an award, that's fucking great. Like, that's awesome. But that's not why you do it. Do it because you got to fucking do it. Nathan, Forget about awards. As long as people yeah. enjoy your work, that means it's good. That's right. Nate dog. Nate Word. dog knows. I've had Nate dog. Uh, Nate dogs acted in some of my work as well. He was in um, uh, something called malevolent. You can see it on YouTube. It was for the ABCs of death Two contest and, and oh, nathan's cool. really great in it yeah so um yeah sorry go ahead uh well tell them so i, I want to play the trailer in a second sure and but first tell them what you asked me to do for the for the movie yeah so that's like a little story in itself yeah we had a we had a conversation and and kevin very generously and and uh just in in the nicest way ever was like Hey man, I, I got music and stuff. If you ever need anything, let me know. And and then you and then you saw how much music that I had. Right, but I but, unleashed on you. Like here's like that a hundred songs. That, yeah. Before you even did that, I was like, I was like, yeah, you know, respect because like I was like, you know, I'm gonna take you up on that because you're putting you're putting that out there. You're putting yourself out there, and I'm like, as I said, I want to include people in the stuff I'm making and. So it's like I'm gonna find a, a way or a reason to to incorporate that into whatever. So you sent, yeah, you sent me this big file of music, and I listened through, and most of the stuff did not fit what I needed. There were a couple of things that did, and one thing in particular that I was gonna use for sure. And then the scene changed. I edited, yeah. re-edited the scene. It didn't. The music didn't fit the scene anymore. I had to cut it. But which is all good because it was not created for it. Well, if you created something for the thing, like yeah. I, it would be crazy not to use it. That no, that's that's a whole different ball of wax. Yeah, yeah. I came to Kevin at like super late at night. I was like, "Hey, uh, can you make a song that sounds like Danzig, Black Acid Devil?" The yeah, song, the not team. the album. The Although the song is sort of song off the exemplary album. of the album. And Ke and it was like late at night, and I wasn't expecting to Kevin to just do it right then and there, but I was like. He was like, ah, man, I'm like going on tour in a few days. Oh, and I yeah. listen, I and I appreciate that, too, because, you know, I would hate for someone to be like, yeah, I could do it. And then they can't. They're in over their head and then they don't deliver like that would that would upset me. But I appreciate I always do the same thing. I'm like, hey, I don't know if I could do this. I can't. I never like to promise something I can't deliver mm -hmm. most of the time. Like I really try. I strive to do that. I should say I strive. To if I can't do if I can't promise it, I'm not or if I can't what I'm trying to deliver say is, it. Yeah, if I can't deliver it, I don't want to promise it. Yeah, I don't want to be in that position ever. Um, but you know, I said I said to him, I was like, look, no expectation. If you think you can listen to Kevin was like, All right, I'll listen to the song, I'll see what I can do. And I was like, Yeah, if you listen, if you could do anything, try it. If you can't, that's fine. I wanted to just put it out there that I'm taking you up on the, your offer. And appreciate it, yada yada yada. And Kevin came back very quickly. It was very very quick turnaround, which I was a not day expecting. or two maybe. Yeah, it was yeah, very very short. Like 
I, I honestly didn't think he was going to do it. And I, and I, I don't know like, if I didn't believe that I was going to do it either. Yeah. And I was like, I was cool with that. I really was cool with it because like, again, I understand you, you, you were getting, you're trying to get ready to go on tour and it was a very last minute request. And I was on a time crunch too. So I was probably thinking it's not going to work out for whatever reason. Uh, and, and, and totally fine if it didn't work out. However, Kevin did send me something. Not only did he send me something, he sent me exactly what I like kind of wanted for the scene. Yeah, it, it really was, it really was great. Cause what I, what I, you know, I can't license music. I can't afford to. So what I've done, and I've done this before, I did this with Romeo's distress as well as I'll go, I'll go to someone. I'll be like, Hey, can you make a song that sounds like the song? Even if of it's course. a blatant rip off of the song, that's the point. I just want that, that, that tone. Well, I totally ripped off Danzig on this, <laughs> but that's what I wanted. Exactly. To do. Exactly. That good. That was good. And uh, he and he left the track untitled, so I was like, "All right." Uh, he has a song for his other project called uh, "Welcome to My Pity Party." Yeah, that's the name of my new album. Right, coming and I out still next haven't week. Seen that. Where's that music video? I want to see. I know. Uh, well, I'm going to talk about that in my <laughs> ad space. Okay. Okay. Um, the uh, yeah, so I thought it would be funny instead of cans uh, of Kevin's pity party if it was his Danzig party. So the song is called Kevin's Danzig Party, as it is in the credits. And uh, and now I have to accept that that's the name of my song. Well, yeah, the, Kevin had another name for it, and he was... Oh, he I think was I very, called it Black Acid Kevin. Yeah, which was fine, but you didn't commit to it. I was ready no, to I use Black really Acid care. Kevin. You're like, oh, I don't know, maybe. So it's like, that's it. All right, fine, forget it. It's just going to yeah. be Kevin's, pity, Kevin's Danzig Party, and I like that. It's what a Danzig Party represents. I think that's funny. All right, so, shall we watch the trailer? Go, on, yeah, play it. Show sure. people what we're talking about here. Sure. Okay. I'm all about it. Will you do some yoga poses for me? I know you'll do a yoga pose for your uncle Elmo, right, Anthony? It's my friend Stanley. He's missing. Texts, emails, smoke signals, no answer. I'm just worried. Give me his info and I'll see what I can do. No promises. You know, sometimes it's just really hard to play the cards that life deals you. Ee -hee. I'm not in the mood to talk about music right now. Oh, not Michael Jackson. Ee -hee, the gas. There's cartridges and gas works that comes to go with it. Chill, put that away. You shitty little asshole. Who the fuck do you, you think, think you are? Tony the Stamper is back. back. And bloodthirsty for territory. Yeah. That's you. That is me. Yeah, that funny story about that scene. <laughs> I made that puppet in college. Oh, cool. That stock music that I slowed down. Oh, wow, really? Yeah, that song is actually really. Well, you hear it. You hear it progressively yeah. get slower in the movie. It starts off really peppy. I hate the color grade on the trailer and the mix. I really need to redo that. But I don't want to lose my YouTube views. Mm. That that yeah. way that we did that title was really cool, too. Oh, let me show that you that. Just paint? Here, I'll show you. This is how... Let's see. This is how we do it. This is how we do it. So this is... That is the same title. Nice. So what I did was I just put that against a white picket fence and sprayed blood on onto that and then keyed out the green and then turned the red up really high. And that mm. made the effect. And then I shot a, a plate shot, which is like the all the stuff you see behind lying on the grass. And then I superimposed it on top. And that's literally what they do in the Blood Feast trailer, like Blood Feast from 1963. Yeah, Herschel Gordon Lewis. Lewis. Yeah, so the Blood Feast title, of course. that's where I Come got Come on, I'm making a documentary about the right. Blood Diner guy. Right, so that's where I got the inspiration to do the title like that was from Blood Feast, the uh, trailer, because I liked, I was like, oh, they did that on Blue the Screen. Wizard that's of really Gore. simple. Yeah, and then they just poured blood on the title, and I thought that was really cool. So I actually did my own version of it for the credits of Gadget, which I thought really would set the tone of 
the violence to come without actually spoiling anything you know he's definitely a, a an indie horror legend to you know to to copy absolutely, i guess dude. you know absolutely I mean. yeah, yeah yeah i mean that's the thing like you know it's the same with music too like you know it, it's not stealing dude it's like it's like being inspired and then weaving it into your own work oh you know? yeah my new albums that's like the whole thing yeah you know, I mean, even Welcome to My Pity Party is sort of a magical uh, mystery tour. Yeah, it's a magical mystery tour, you know, and it's, it's Welcome I, to I didn't my even do that party. intentionally that I feel like just my years because, you know, in Von Esper, I haven't written lyrics for Von Esper in like 15, 20 is years. Is that how you say it? I always say Von Spur. It's Von Esper. I mean, it's a made up name, so it's really no way to say it. So you really should space out the Esper and the Von then because that just, they read it as Von Spur. You know, it would be interesting to, I didn't actually Kevin make it up. Von I found Esper. it somewhere. Um, I wonder what the original creator says. I have no idea. Von I don't Spur. even know who that is, but. Maybe I should try to seek them down. It's cool see. to have your own made up name. Yeah, it's kind of like, you know, it's unique. No Weezer. Gonna... You know, what does that mean? I don't know. Just sounds you know, cool. You're, you're just a Weezer. You're someone yeah. who wheezes. Right. You wheeze the juice. <laughs> wheeze. See, we're back to Encino Man. Is Mel still here? I don't think so. Um, wheeze in the jazz. Yeah, exactly. Um, but what yeah, was I talking you... about. What were we talking? Oh no, we were talking know. about the title. We were talking about the tra Oh, the trailer. Oh no, my album. And oh, your like, album. Yeah, and like yeah, the yeah. pop, kind of like the pop culture reference of it all. I just feel like, you know, because I in Von Esper, I didn't. Um, that's what I was talking about. I didn't really write right. lyrics for a long time because I had singers right. doing that. Right. So when I came back to writing lyrics for this project. I think all those years in Green Jelly like seeped out of me, and you know, because they kind of have that parody thing going and, uh, you and used so to, it's okay. all pop culture references all over the album you used to I, you know i didn't realize this so uh uh jesso lantern used yeah. to work with her and i i forgot how i discovered her music but i love it i really yeah she's love the singer her. of von esper and she was the singer of von esper i i like was like holy shit that's so funny the, the connection there i didn't um, know you didn't know that I, I didn't, it had no idea. I mean, she's, of course you would know her because she's totally in that like horror punk community, especially in the tri-state area. I don't know her at all. I know, we know, I think we both know a lot of the same people. Oh, absolutely do. Yeah. But I don't actually know her. I don't even know if I've ever seen her or met her or anything, mm. but I forget. I I saw someone, there was someone posted a, a, a YouTube video and that led me down a rabbit hole. I wonder if I, I filmed it. <laughs> I, I just love her like acoustic, like it's like she does this like horror acoustic um, sort of like, uh, it, you know what it is? It's uh, th it's theater. It's uh, sure. no, it's um, oh, what's it called? What am I thinking of? Uh, I mean, uh, she's very like Rocky horror inspired, but like yes, horror and yes. And I really enjoy a lot of those songs. There's one song is about Rocky horror in particular. I think that's my favorite one. It's it's like a mixture of rent and Rocky yeah. horror. And it's really freaking yeah. good. And I like I kind of want to see her write like a concept album, to be hmm. honest. I, I really think she could just like crush it like the, the way zombina and the skeletons they did a concept album and it was great yeah there she is man she she's she's tremendous yeah that's tremendous nice Treme and did you Very ever see talented. skeletal life yeah skeletal life open for doyle that was last time yeah I that was her saw... too oh she was in that i was last yeah. time i ever saw jason trioxin alive yeah you know what i can play some of that um Blackthorn. Yeah, right. I, like I don't think I'm going to get 51. I won't get like in trouble for YouTube for this one. I don't think I'll just do a little sample. You know what? Worst case scenario, they'll just have you cut it out. I know. I know. Do. Is that Jason? That's Jason. Oh, oh, she was at that show. She was the singer. Oh, my God. I didn't even fucking realize that. Oh, she was there. <laughs> Yeah, that's me playing bass. Yeah, I remember. I remember I saw you that day. And we have and Doyle's awesome backline like making us look awesome. 
Oh my God. I didn't even realize that was her. That's so crazy. Yeah. So Jason, Jason. and he was just a replacement drummer. So yeah. That's I, so well, funny. Although the last time I saw him was playing with, um, with our Ar Argyle Goolsby. Yeah. It's tragic, tragic story. What happened to Jason? Yeah. Really sad. Really sad. Yeah. We were going to do some video or something. He, um, yeah, man, just a sad story. And I'm sorry. He never released his, uh, he never released his, uh, his album, his set, his follow up Mr. Monster album. I see. I didn't follow his music career that closely. I just, I knew him through other things, sort of. Right. I mean, I knew him through that other side and yeah. Um, yeah, Jason was an interesting. Him and I were not on good terms when he yeah. passed. Yeah, he, Jason. I know. Oh, you know. <laughs> I mean, I've heard you talk about it. I don't know. Oh, I don't. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't hear it from him. I just hear you talk about it. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you the whole story. I'll tell you the story off air. But yeah, uh, yeah. I, basically, yeah. I've always, I always like to point that out whenever speaking about Jason because I don't want people to think that it's me, like be like yo my buddy my buddy died blah, sure. blah, blah. i mean i wasn't that close to him either like we played these few shows together yeah. so you kind of always have a bond in a band together sure even though he was only in the band for like a week and but it's not still, like listen, it's, it's like look like, we we're rocking out dude you know even, listen even if you you don't get along with someone you know i was very i was deeply sad when he passed away you know it just you know it just it was tragic, yeah. man. I think he's tragic. the first so person that I know of that I've ever played music with that like passed away. So, oh my god, it's it's just tragic, dude. It's it's so it's so sad. Anyways. And um, yeah. Oh, so let me um. Ashes to this ashes. is somewhat of a segue into this slide, which was in your wash away folder. So maybe there's yeah, some context ahead. to it. Do it. But do let, it. let's breeze through, through some slides and then. You know. Yeah, I like this. This is a get. You know, this is something I'm going to try and do on my channel when I have the right guest because it takes yeah. a lot of preparation. But this is awesome. Go ahead, do it. Let's do it. Well, this was in there. Ah. All right. So I didn't know that was in there, but so there's that's, there's you know Doyle who I was like, opening for in that show. So there's the context and segue. Okay, that photo. I took that photo, and that photo has been used a lot. I see that photo everywhere, and I'm and I've matched it up. That is my mother effing photo that from I Madison Square cell Garden. Phone. Yes, I was there. Yes, that, that was that was from Madison. I was Square I was Garden. way up in the cheap seats, but I was there. I I had to, every time I I've know, seen yeah. them. Every time I've seen them, I've had to be in the pit because I just I I just couldn't like you know I've always thought like maybe I should just do the cheap seats, and I just know it would be like torture to me. Like I would just have to jump down into the pit. Like I couldn't help myself. <laughs> And it, I, it's you, you know, you get some characters up there. There was this guy behind us at the end of the show. He just would not shut up about skulls. He just kept screaming skulls, and everyone's like, "Dude, they played it already." I, I you know, I was right near. Like, I saw that like wheelchair girl. Yeah, the face. Like, yeah, it was like I, you know. And the other thing too is that like, you know, I don't know if I ever want to see them again. Like, I know. I, yeah. I, I know that they might pull, like if they play again in the future, I'm sure York, I would, if they did maybe, New York again, you know, if I, if I have the resource to do so, but like, like, like this was like the perfect show. Like, it this was the, was. like I don't ever need to see it again. Like I almost kind of don't want to ruin how perfect this show was by seeing it again or, or uh you know uh doing it because that like how it's diminishing returns yeah but you know like how many times is it going to feel like the way that it felt at riot fest in new jersey and now new york you know so i'm just kind of yeah i didn't i missed the new jersey when you were there right it was okay yeah it was fun it was it was good it wasn't as good as the msg but i agree with you and 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 somewhat just because i was there but this is the real homecoming show absolutely was absolutely was i like your argument that misfits Although they drove from New Jersey into New York, they were a New York band. Mr. Jim and Franche Coma have both personally told me they were a New York band. And Good. so I it's go, canon. It's canon to me. So so this was in the wash away folder. Was that had did that have anything to do with the movie? Or I have you just no, wanted to No, I have no idea how it Okay. Have, I must have been uploading it. It must have been there this whole time. Yeah. And I Kevin had asked me for a bunch of photos and stuff, and I I did my due diligence. I, 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 initially, I initially forgot 
and then Kevin followed up with me, and I, so I did. I'm my just YouTube gonna YouTube. scroll okay, through go some of them. That's we don't have to talk about like H1 specifically, but gotcha. Um, so to, but to go back, that's the guy who ends up becoming the star of Gouge Away. But this is when we were doing Wash Away, and he was not meant to be anything more than just like a crew guy. He was hmm. like helping me out with stuff, and um, yeah. Well, now so. he's the lead guy. Yep, that's us filming. We're filming. You see the boom is there, and yeah, that's. It, I wanted to. I liked these behind the scenes because you can see your like indie setup, and that's very you know inspiring for. Well, the, the sound wasn't good on that. The sound wasn't particularly the best on in that scene in that shot because the boom is not positioned properly. Because the bottom line is, you should always hire a sound person. That's it. Yeah. Just hire a yeah. Suddenly he's your star. Yeah. Hire a sound person. If you don't have the money, then you should do something like this. But if if you have money or if you have the ability, don't do it by yourself. This was very rewarding. Oh, I, I have a clip of this. Should I play out. the clip of that? that I, yeah, I, yeah. Play the clip. I didn't know if you Let's could see. play clips. I included that because maybe you. Could. Yeah, I just didn't cue them up, so I got to find it. <laughs> um. This was us doing, uh, yeah, I wanted to just get this point of view. And as you can see, we just kept moving the lights around. The lights are not motivated in any way. It's just meant to be really stylized lighting because I don't know how to light. And I just wanted it to look That was a good, good. take. That was I'll turn the sound off. Um, and yeah, that's, so I'm having him da lying down and just doing it the scene. And we just use the same lights. And as you can see, I have the headphones on, these same headphones right here. So I'm listening to the sound just to make sure that the sound is loud enough. I'm literally, I'm not thinking as a shooter or a director. I'm also thinking as an editor when I do this stuff. Sure. You know, so. Some behind the where, scenes yeah, indie yeah. filmmaking for you. Yeah, he gets, that's where he gets his inspiration to go do what he does. I'm so glad that Matt shot this and that we got some, some great uh, behind the scenes. I, I literally have not watched this ever oh, really? so it's cool to see it yeah i've never seen this i i have it i've had it on a hard drive for years i was painful to look at any of this stuff it was super painful i didn't want to look at it i just like it was a bad memory because mm -hmm. we didn't finish it and that's why i was like i have to finish it you know There's that's the gas setup. gun yeah that's the cool gas props gun. that that's the one i want i liked with the um boom sticking out and everything so that is i mean that is literally how i rec I, I i i was the location sound recordist i shot the movie i lit the movie and that's how we did it yes matt absolutely carried gouge away 100 this i just well mask. you showed the mask live so but yeah i wanted to show how creepy job, it is the paint job is different though that's that the paint job yeah i kept re i kept redoing the paint oh, yeah, i, I didn't like that. it so I kept sanding it down and then repainting it because I didn't like the way that the paint looked. Some behind the scenes. You yeah, looking a little you, moody. Yeah, it was I was I was feeling pressure, man. I was feeling so like pressure because I was like, are we gonna be able to do this? I didn't know if it was gonna work. There's our eyeball. Yeah, so this this was this eyeball. in directly were you like, well, now it's gouge away, so I need to take something from those lyrics. No, wash away. Always had that scene is actually from really? Wash Away. Yes, that's and that's a, a lyric in Gouge Away. Because I was inspired because as I told you, I'm inspired by music when I write. And so I decided that he was gonna gouge his eye out, and I was thinking about the movie Gouge Away. So it only made sense that when we were doing the sequel to call it gouge away because of the scene gotcha. partially. Okay, so. so it was the scene. Okay, it's kind any of full circle. With, any scene with Stanley inside is from wash away and right. everything else is gouge away that's and how you'll know the difference on june i can't pronounce the name of this movie inspired were you inspired unchun andalu of course unchun andalu yes because that's Unchun another Andalou, lyric in the yes. pixies songs yes and and originally i wanted to call my my thing debaser my i wanted to be ah. debaser productions slicing up eyeballs so like to put to put this at the center of the movie was very much like uh it was very true to like what what i was you know what i wanted to do what i was trying to do and stuff so yeah i just want to further point out my pick oh yes. yeah. so i can take this up now but i didn't even show this this is my chronic chronic con <laughs> i didn't actually go this came with the 
reboot. Kevin Blu-ray. likes to surround himself with the totems of the theme of his show. Well, why not? not? If I, fun. you know, if nothing else, who else is going to see this shit? Ever? Yeah, it's like, of course, it's like, should you? I guess this is it? now vintage. Would you say? That's I that's forget. What did I have on the back? It's uh, almost so twenty years. Can though. you see yeah. it? Yeah, it's it, well, it's uh, Pixie's tour. Pixie sell out tour. That's like the first tour. Okay. First reunion tour. Yeah, two thousand four. So on the way there, I was getting in the mood. I pulled out. Um, this is here's. I'm going to do a little prop show here. The Pixies live. Yes, the, at the show that you went to, right? You bought yes, it. Yes. Fuck yeah, dude. Such and a cool what idea. Was even greater, better about this. Although I don't have the compliment to this, but that's they a, actually played two problem. shows this this day. At um, Hammerstein Ballroom, uh, New York City, December 2004. Okay, I have that show on. I have a bootleg of that show. And this that, is the early show. Okay, but you know what's crazy about that? Those that those are like the first. I feel like those are the beginning shows, right? That's the very. It's the, pretty close, I guess. Yeah, maybe. It's got to be. I'm almost positive it is. It might be the first time they played New York for sure. It might be. Yeah. Wow, dude. That yeah. Is so rad. what's even crazier about this is. Me and my girlfriend in college at the time went to this show, and then our other friend was going to the late show, so we ran into her on the way out. She's yeah. like, so my other friends didn't show up, and I have two extra tickets. Do you want to go see them again? Oh. So we went to see the Pixies twice in one day. You lucky So I bought devil, this dude. one, and, and she bought the late show, and we were going to trade, and I don't know if I ever got it. I it must it. be out there. The I late show. It. I can give it to you. Yeah. If nice. you want it, I'll give it to you. I have to find yeah. it somewhere on a hard drive, but I have it. And it. so this is double disc. I was I listened to it all uh on the way to and from uh the movie tonight. And this part of their second set of this show, like convinces me of that they are a punk band. And I gotta totally, read they are totally a punk band. Pixies are absolutely a punk band hardcore but check this out like there's a a certain um sequence of songs that it was just like holy shit so check this out uh wait 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 can i get wait 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 yeah do you want to guess yeah so let me let me see i'm actually i'm gonna assume it starts one two three four five six let's say six six songs maybe not maybe let's say five all right ready one of them for sure is Isla de Encanta. Yep. Okay. One of them is Crackety Jones. Crackety Jones. One of them is one. Uh, one of them is maybe something against you. Something against you. No, shut up for real. Okay. Uh, one of them is, hmm, I think, uh, uh, punk, 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 punk. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, no, they wouldn't have played. Think head eyes, on. think eyes. What, uh, d- uh, debaser? No, wait, with eyes. Uh, what, gouge away? N- no, they play both of those songs later in the set with eyes. Uh, no, don't tell me, do not tell me. I'm like a fucking huge Pixies fan. I, I know. Understand. Hold on, with I, what, uh, uh, not Trump Lamond. Um, no. Uh, did they play the uh, did they play the sad punk? No. Um Planet of Sound? That was uh before this set, but no no. With the eyes. All right, what is it? Just tell me. Broken face. Oh yeah, broken face. Of course, that's a fucking that song's punk as fuck, man. Yeah, so Crackety Jones, something against you, is the day in Kanta, broken face, and then what did they close it with? This little set of songs. Uh, all right, maybe the holiday song. It's not as punk rock, but the riff hits like holy shit, like super heavy. Uh, there's so, there's so many riffs. I know like that. Um, that might be too vague. If you want me to just tell you, no, give me a tiny hint without giving the song away. <sighs> That's tough. All right, don't don't. Like, I gotta get this. I gotta get this. It's, um, uh, I'm trying to think of something that listen, wouldn't give it away. Three out of six is. I mean, it's not as it's good, not though. as it's not as hardcore as the other ones, but like after them and this riff comes in, you're like, yes. Let's I just mean, say it matches the energy. I you know I want to say it would be head on, but head on is too early. They didn't start doing head on until later, a few years later. 
that that, that cover that, that they used to do. No, it's an original. It's an original. All right. I just tell me. I, I give UMass. Up. Oh yeah, UMass. Of course, it's educational. So like after those punk yes. songs, then it's like. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, sure. You're like, ah, yes. There's and so then much... they and then they bring it back down with hey afterwards. What a fucking set list, dude. What a set list, dude. And let me tell you something. When you hear them doing Crackety Jones or or Isla de Encanta, I it's mean, like hardcore punk. It's just straight up fucking hardcore punk. So that's why the Pixies are one of my favorite bands of all time because they go from being death rock to yeah. being hardcore punk to being like surrealist. To doing like they're doing like weird like western ballads like caribou yeah doom, 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 yeah doom, 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 it's varied but it's all you oh, know punk they, rock they are, sort of they they are a they absolutely are a punk band i've always felt they've always had a punk energy to them and they are that they, they are like they are in my top five like they are just one of my favorite bands i, I used yeah to i wouldn't know, put them up there in mine but i i'd respect them a lot actually i loved the breeders first the breeders are great too because I, uh, I that like, was current, you know, like Cannonball when Cannonball, Cannonball came out, it was sure. huge. I didn't know who the Pixies were when that Doe, came out. Doe was a great song. Uh, New Year. Yeah, that um, whole album, Last Splash, was great. Yeah, Last Splash is a great album, but right. that like, and even like early Frank Black, like Teenager of the Year, man. I'm not as familiar, bro. You got to get a hold yeah. of Teenager of the Year. That's his second album. It's a double album, and it's just. You know, the first three albums are almost might as well be Pixie songs. Like, uh -huh. in fact, a few of them were Pixie songs for a record that never materialized. So like Brackish Boy, that was originally a Pixie song. And then it just became a Frank Black song. So you listen to like you listen to to Teenager of the Year and you're going, holy shit, this might as well. This is Pixies. Like he mm -hmm. was the sole songwriter, essentially, in the Pixies. Kim of wasn't really writing songs that much. Um but yeah, dude, that that those songs are great, and Crackety Jones just make you go crazy. It kills, there yeah, goes my gun, Circle Pit man. <laughs> there goes yeah, my there gun. goes my gun. Holy great. shit! Yeah. But if you listen, if you're into like Kevin, I know you're into like death rock and post punk and stuff. A little if bit. You listen to Doolittle, man. Like so much of it is death rock. Like I bleed is yeah. just like uh and dead, but particularly I, I bleed, bleed is what they play before Crackety Jones. Yeah, well, it's also like, you know, the sound that Nirvana basically uh, co-opted, yes. you know, you especially with Kirk their producer. Cobain. Kirk Cobain going, pretty my dear, why are we well, here? That's why they got Nobody Steve Albini. Knows. Yeah, we, because of the Steve Pixies. Albini, Steve Albini uh, um, did Surfer Rosa. Yeah. And you know what's so cool about Surfer Rosa is it's recorded in like some weird like place. It's not recorded in a studio. Steve Albini was like recording them in bathrooms with like weird tiles, like, and that's what makes you know that's why I like feel like the studio environment like isn't necessary for creating a very unique, interesting record. Like you can record a record anywhere and come up with something really cool and unique as opposed to a big polished produced yeah, sound well that's what i did i'm gonna <laughs> promote my album once again like sure. i recorded that here and then everyone else recorded their parts wherever they are it's not that's professional at all but you can do that now that's what's up man you exactly you can do it and and you just gotta you, you just gotta like just figure out a way to do really interesting unique like sounds or recording techniques and it doesn't matter like like HR from the Bad Brains, like recorded his vocals for Sacred Love through a friggin'. Well, yeah, but that oh. was out of necessity. <laughs> well, I'll tell you something. Because when he we was doing, in jail. <laughs> when we were doing Wash Away, I forgot to film a conversation with the antagonist, Dale, played by Jeffrey Solomon. And he was already SAG and he could not come mm. back and do any more work on the movie. And so I. I called him up and because I knew I was going to put filters on his voice anyway, I just recorded him through the phone in my closet. It just made the most sense mm -hmm. and it sounded perfect. It was exactly what I wanted. And, you know, I would have like set up like a nice fancy boom and then distressed everything. It didn't need to be distressed. It just had to be recorded like in camera in the same way that we shot in black and white in camera. There is no color right. in that movie because we lit everything for black and white and we shot in black that, and white. That was Romeo's. 
That was Romeo's distress. Yeah. That was done in a monochrome profile. Yeah, the let's next... talk about that in a second. Um, Absolutely. Here's my my other quick show and tell is I got the same thing from the Doolittle tour that I saw. Oh man, yeah, very cool. That was the they did Doolittle all the way through live. Yeah, and then uh, you know another tour. set. I'm so jealous. This was also a Hammerstein. I was wondering if you were there, 2009. No. No, I, I saw the so I saw the Pixies with Kim Deal twice. I saw them in two thousand five. Yeah, I think she was at both of these. Definitely she the left, first one. She left in twenty thirteen. So definitely, yeah. Yeah, and then I've seen the Pixies in total. I probably seen them about eight or nine times, and I, I like really go every chance I get. And as a matter of fact, they're coming up again in early October, and I it's going to be the first time that I'm actually. Yeah, gonna I'm not going to make that one. <laughs> It's just, I, I can't, I can't, I can't swing that. It's just too, it's too crazy. And, um, and I, I'll tell them, you know, I keep promising myself next year, next year. I did, however, order the new album because, you know, I had to fucking get up, get it on vinyl. I wanted to have it. Wait, and, is there um, a new one coming out? Or there's is a it new out? album. There was a new album. And the way I see it is like, if you pre-order an album, an album is always like cheaper than the cost to like go see a band live. So it's like that's how you have to justify it. Like if you would go pay this much money to see a band live, you could pay this much money to yeah, you know yeah. or the, if you or want less, to support the band, money. You support well, them, you know. Of course, of course, and if you want to support the band as well, um, uh, yeah, they have a brand new album. They've actually recorded two new albums, from my understanding. The first one's coming out. It's called Doggerel, and I, don't ask me what that means. I but... think they have they recorded more albums since they've reunited than they did in their first incarnation. Now I think they're tied now. Wow. That's interesting. And so Paz is really, I love Paz, and she, she's the sure. one that replaced uh, Kim. Yeah, Dillon. she was in a perfect circle. She and was in Zwan. a perfect circle, and Zwan. She's great, man. And I'll tell you, that last Pixies album, Beneath the Eerie, is phenomenal, man. Like, yeah, I have their, to revisit it. I just remember they put out like a podcast about them for it, and it was the most yeah, boring awesome. thing I've ever heard. Oh, really, dude? I, <laughs> I love thought it was terrible. I was like. It was like, of it. and then they went into the kitchen to get some food, and they <laughs> yeah. talked about their children. But it was like, like just <laughs> are you I love fucking the kidding me? Yeah, but just because it's the same way that I love the minutia about the misfits, I love the minutia. Yeah, they tried to make it interesting, and I was like, they're trying, they're really pulling teeth to make this interesting. I, I could imagine. I'm sorry, if you were not as invested as as if you were not. As I invested, tried. You're not find it interesting. It's it's no uh, get back documentary. I'll tell you that. Oh my God! I my my review of Get Back was as long as yeah, Get Back sure. was. Yeah, I, beat. I did beat by beat. I took notes. Beat. By I think beat I probably watched it, it, but I watch you in two times the speed usually. So, right. That that's yeah. the that's smart. That's yeah. how. I I hope. I wonder if it, I guess it still tracks on YouTube even at two times the speed. So that's good. That means I, you're I hope so. Twice, yeah. twice the quota there. That's good. Yeah. That's good. I like it. I like All right, it. I'm getting back to my slides. We're way yeah, off topic. Ahead. I mean, I don't. We don't uh, need to go just... into detail, but I know you probably want to talk about this. Well, guy, that's right? Dave Street, and that was the last. That was the last picture I ever took with him, and he he died a few months later. And he there's Dave Street with his records, and so now I'm wondering. So now I know. I'm sorry, R.I.P. your friend, but who owns yeah. those records now? No clue. Because those those look I, like some I don't classics. Know. I don't know what happened to Dave's stuff. He Wait, what's was, this other one? I see horror business. That's the undead. The undead. Okay, which is Bobby Steele's. Yeah, yeah. Um, and he wrote the insert for that. And uh, he, I don't know. I don't know what happened to that stuff. He was, he wanted me to record him. I think he knew that he could die at any time, and he wanted me to get his final words on tape. Oh wow! And I think don't think I was the only person who did that for him. I think somebody else did recorded stuff for him too, but. Um, after he died, I dug up that stuff and put it up on YouTube, uh, as a memory, uh, to his legacy and whatnot. And, um, yeah, dude, just, just trippy. Like we've had, we had three people pass away during the production. So yeah, happens, um, man. They were all old or in bad health. And well, I want to know like, about this creepy puppet. That puppet is sitting right on the other side of this TV, and his name is the Red Hono, and he was built in college, and I took a puppetry class in college, hmm. and um, I, he's just an interesting fellow. He's been in other films, and he's you could see him briefly in Romeo's Distress, right. and he's the star. Of, he was made and is the star of a movie called A Faustian Tale, 
which is a silent horror film. Hmm. I don't know if it's horror, really. It's just a silent film that's that that I made. I would say A Faustian Tale is really my true first narrative. Is that out there? Short. Yeah, it's on my YouTube channel. You can gotcha. you can see it. And uh, if you like if you like German expressionalism and like like black and white and like weird puppet shit, like you will enjoy this. And I so was like, like Dr. Caligari. Yeah, a little bit. Um, Nosferatu. I, my, my next project is going to be very much in that vein. I'm going to go hardcore on the German expressionalism. It's going to be uh, it's going to be really insane. Black and it, white. Yes. Assuming that I assuming that it does end up being my next project, I'm writing it right now. Uh, I'm intending it to be. You heard it here first, budget. maybe. I don't know. You talk um, a lot on your channel. <laughs> no, I don't. Not sure if I've talked about this. On oh, my channel. we got an exclusive. Maybe, maybe, I'm gonna maybe. call. I'm gonna say it is, even if it's not. You can. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I any chance I get, you know, everything that's in my movies, if it's all in the in the scene, I saw that yeah. it has some connection. Like I, okay, this is actually something I'm super proud of. Yeah. Because, so I want to get into your branding. Sure. Because I think I got a whole set of these coming up. So, so well, before I get there, I just want to say that everything in the frame is usually motivated in some way, meaning like, like it's some personal tchotchke or something or something. Yeah. There's some meaning behind anything that's in the frame of any of the movies. Uh, in the case of this, what you're seeing in that, that book is me coming up with the idea so I decided I was going to create my my son, my son and I had an inside joke called Uncle Moo, which was a stuffed animal. And I said, I want him to get high on nitrous that comes from whipped cream. And the brand is Uncle Moo. And Uncle Moo sends you to the moon <laughs> and it has whipped cream. And because we use Nicolas Cage's face in in. um in Romeo's distress, I decided that this was some sort of brand like acne, acne, you know, uh, or like pig Newtons or something. So it's a mm. uh, in-camera brand that always features the, the meme version of Nicholas Cage's face. And that's the, uh, the <laughs> twin peaks pattern underneath. And so the, w the reason why oh, I wanted to show this to you, okay, yeah, yeah, it's twin peaks. That's the I black lodge. It. Yeah. So what, what makes the special is you can see here, these are sketches of me thinking of some semblance, but not really knowing how it's going to work in real life. Mm -hmm. So over there, that's just me trying to invent a device for delivering the e he gas. And just, I couldn't figure out because I was thinking he has to progress because this was wash away. This was not gouge away stuff yet. I was like, he has to progress from nitrous to something harder. So it has to be like this gun. He's using like a whippet gun, but it shouldn't look like whippets. So, the uh so but what so what i love about this is that it's just this is what i imagined and this is what came about and i'm just proud of it that's that's it you know i'm proud of it yeah speaking that's, of these in camera brands like movie you know this exactly. is like your own it's universe smith yeah american dragon and Bowl that's Bowl. another one right oops yes so this is my actual grandfather that's my oh grandfather. really and this is the beer that they're drinking in Romeo's Distress, as well as Gouge yes. This Bay. is this is going to be yeah. I figured you mixed your brands into your, both. Of your I did, movies. and as you can see, there's the little Nicholas Cage face. So I oh yeah yeah. So I figured in my head, in my my in my in movie world, like this Nicholas Cage brand is something, and yeah. So that's Papa's ale, and that was my Papa when he was 17 fighting in World War II, God and damn. I and he he passed away. So I figured this would be a great way to get him in the movie and like to honor him and stuff and uh just have him thank you nathan yeah just have him there man and just you know it's just i love making that shit crap of course yeah the crack there he is again balls yeah so as you see nick the, this there's like this cartoon uh this nicholas k and i love nicholas cage uh yeah the chocolate rain exotic <laughs> sampler <laughs> forgot about up. that one <laughs> Yeah, um, that well, that was just chocolate rain, like the the YouTube guy. I just thought that would be fun yeah. to put on. Yeah, exactly. Chocolates, so you know, chocolate rain. All right, as we transition, all right. I mean, we gotta, <laughs> we could go for hours, but I gotta land this plane <laughs> eventually because I gotta work tomorrow. So yeah, but, I gotta wake up and get the kids to school. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But we'll definitely. I mean, I'm not ending it yet. Like 
Well, I was going to aim for two hours, but we'll see. I always, I always say we're starting our gradual descent. Yeah, we're, exactly. We're we're entering our final descent. So, so uh, this this is supposed to be the middle, but <laughs> yeah, right. Um, I want to promote myself. So there this is go. happening next episode, Thursday <laughs> night at nine o'clock well, Eastern well, time. Pity party. We're gonna well, listen to the album. Well, God willing, you see, I put up a, I put up a, mostly for myself, but I uploaded the album to my YouTube channel today, Good. and it got blocked immediately. Why? For what reason? <laughs> because I'm distributing it through CD Baby, and their algorithms caught it. And so man. good to know that it's working, but I guess I've had to go through the process to like make sure that doesn't happen, and I'm hoping. It's implemented before the show to, uh, next week. <laughs> I know you're not monetized yet, but the irony is that you'll probably make more money once you do get monetized because you're on your way there for sure. I hope so. Everybody subscribe. Subscribe right you, now. You're, if you you're on already. Your, I think listen, everyone I was, watching is probably subscribed. I didn't already. know you had over 500 subscribers. I was like, you're on your way, dude. You just got to get to that 4,000. Well, yeah, I mean, mark. You, you get there, man. Just keep doing it. I've had this account doing. for a long time, but I haven't been doing lives for a long time. So this is Bro, a new era. It took me it took me months and months and months, but to get it back. And I think you're going to be able to do it. You just got to keep doing it. But yes. my point is, is that you might make more money off of the AdSense revenue than you might make through CD Baby by having it on YouTube. It could be, but enough. I have to I have to demonetize it to myself so I could post. I don't know. It's a whole thing, but I yes, I, I know. think I figured it out. But I'm hoping that it's implemented in time so I don't get banned for my own music playing my own music next week. It happens. That would that would be the real pity party. Yes. Me like going off air again, like I did with the Slipknot video, except I made the, all of this. But anyways, let me answer your question from before. What's going on with the video? That's a good question because you did submit a piece of video for my music video, and that is I had a still. Lot of fun. I had a lot of fun doing that. Too. Yes, and thank you for it. And actually, this is a, I'm going to play a, a promo that you pop up in for a second Ooh. in a, in a minute. But I had to finish the album first. I had to like push something out there. So the album's coming out at, right after this stream. You'll be able to get it. It'll be on Spotify and all the things on Friday. So we're going to have a little party Thursday night. I'm going to play. Oh, and here's, here's a quick note. I mean, I'll talk about more of this next week. But there's two versions of the album. Well, there's technically three because there's an instrumental version, but that's not available anywhere yet. But you're going to be hearing on Spotify and on the show next week is what I call the safe and sanitized version. Ah. And so I left a little something extra for the people who actually pay for their physical products. And that's where you'll get the fully uncensored, like, bonus track version Good. of it. It's, it's very subtle, but it's still like, it's different enough where you'll, you know, pay pay for some physical goods and you will get like the actual album. Everything else will be slightly edited. It'll be cleaner, you know, whatever. So anyways, that's what's happening. Join my pity party next week, nine o'clock, well, Thursday, same pity party. Same Von channel, same Von time, except for tonight because it was a little late. But I will be here. It'll be a oh yeah, and the other thing I want to say about it is, if you didn't submit your videos like Jeff did for the for the video album, he's already in it. But for everyone else, this is your opportunity. Like, join me live on video for this broadcast. Like, I'll mute I'll mute everybody during the music. It's only about a half hour album. It's nothing crazy, and that's your opportunity that I can get you on video and use use it for the video album. So come dress up if you want to be a part of it, and I encourage it. Let's have a party with me. You know what I mean? Pity party. And there it is. You can buy the CDs. Every album cover is custom drawn by me. So it is a very um, personalized coaster. Because <laughs> yeah. nobody, nobody can actually play CDs anymore. 
And with that, I think I'm going to play the trailer for the album. Have you seen this yet? I have not. Oh, Let's well, you're in for a up. treat. Let's do it. And now, a word from our sponsors. Comment below! Comment below! Comment below! Ah, uh, so fucking buy my album, vonesper.bandcamp.com. If you pre ordered a CD, you probably have it in the mail already. If not, it should be coming tomorrow, I would imagine. Um, join me next week and then. Let's see. What else do I got? Uh, to I just want to say one thing. Um, th there was one song that you had yep. in that in that in the music you sent me that I loved, and I couldn't use it for anything, but I loved it. It was like robotic, and it was like similar to like, oh. something. It was like I went outside for a walk today. Everything was going wrong. Something, something. Da da da. I have and no I, idea what you're talking maybe it was about. Like, maybe it was like quarantine. Something you're like. Uh, everything is going wrong. I was going outside today. I don't know. It was something um, like weird. Was it, um, there was like a couple of things like that where I was like, this I woke like up today. Oh yeah. It was, I woke up today. Maybe. Yeah. That's just about like living the same day over and over again. Like pandemic. Yeah. It was, yeah, it was great. Yeah, I just but there was also a robot me. thing. There was it. also a robot. Yeah, thing. Yeah. The robot thing was good too. I listened to every single thing you sent me. I listened to every single thing. So, I just, yeah. you know, I just couldn't use any of it. I was yeah, like, that's eh, okay. It doesn't work, doesn't work. Doesn't work. I, I figured yeah. I'd just send you everything. But yeah, yeah those no, are being coming it. soon. Like, um, this, I what's on this cool. album was part of a big pot of songs that I started cooking up during the pandemic. So I have three albums that I've been working on at the same time. Oh, and I just needed shit. to, I needed to focus on one to get done. But the other ones are also like almost done. So there's two albums coming right behind this. And it's all stuff that was, conceived and written in the same period so stay tuned and while you're staying tuned stay subscribe to my youtube channel and watch my new show the guar pod yeah we have sleazy p martini on tuesday dude you are crushing it with the guests man i mean it's you'd be surprised how many respond to you if you just like reach out to them uh, oh you're, you're telling me i i'm the king of that it's yeah you know, you just got to find you got to be resourceful, crafty. And if somebody either says no or blows you off, don't get upset. Just no bide your time and ask them again. And yeah, I needed to start yeah. strong. So I got the director of the documentary and, a, and an actual living member, you know, <laughs> to start yeah. it off. I love that you're doing a Guar pod because, first of all, I don't think there are any Guar podcasts. There was a pod. There was one called the Guar cast. But they stopped doing it a couple of years ago, and I so tried to get them to do a reunion just to have me on as a guest, and they didn't. So they they left a space for me to yeah. to get in there. Corner that market, and exactly. Just, you'll be the Guar guy, dude. I'll be the Guar guy. No yeah. one else is gonna do it. Fuck it. Do it, man. That's great. And I'm also really? the Phantom of the Opera guy now. Yes. This is, this is gonna happen tomorrow, even though I'm totally unprepared and gonna be very tired, I'm sure. But book club chapter three. If you want to join anyone in general, if anyone wants to join me, uh, 
Open Isn't it fun to read books on the thing? Well, I, I don't read it. Content, I don't read it dude. completely. I just, I kind of just deep dive into it. It's nice to have a text that you can mm -hmm. use as a guide. And oh, I do to do a show. It's so. Great. I have, I have it all like like noted and perfect. You know, uh oh, my bookmark. Perfect. Oh no. Anyways, yes, that'll be tomorrow. Okay, that's all my ads. I think. Um, so I was going to talk a lot more about Romeo's distress, but let's just maybe do a, a <laughs> let's see what we can get through in a few minutes. Oh I'll, I'll just throw some slides up there. And sure. that, that this was... is your first feature film, Romeo's distress. It oh, is. I know so... why I had this. Wait, I'm not done with my promo. Sorry. Let me try. Let me do take two on that one. Okay. Yeah, sure. Hey, Jeff, guess what I found? Hey, what did you find? Whoops, that's not the right one. <laughs> what? Found a phantom, found a phantom, found a phantom. Hey, Jeff, I found a phantom in your film Romeo's Distress. You sure did. And, and I'm looking at it. That is really funny that you have that. Yes, that is the phantom up there. I drew that for James's room. The phantom and of the paradise to be. Yes, but there's also specific. beef. Beef is also on the really? wall. Really? Yes, uh, but you can't see him in that shot. Oh. If you look to the left, those pictures, that is like, I took 150 pictures of the actress in like stalkery. Yeah. She yeah. came out just to, so that, and I was like, okay, you just hang out over here and I'm going to take all these pictures. And then I zero, I printed those out at Kinko's and then pasted them up on the wall Fun along set. with beef i gotta find beef damn beef is in I there dude. Beef. dude oh my god he's like That's right great. there he's like he hits you in the face he's right there um but he's just not in this shot so that was my segue from phantom found a phantom to uh your movie so how, that was pretty good right that was pretty good so i that found a phantom good. that's kind of like the thesis of my shows even when i'm not looking for them I find phantoms and I found a phantom in your film. I'm I'm very uh, <laughs> pleased that you found that. And you see how the wall just ends because I just like stopped. Right. I stopped like putting stuff up on the wall and then like shot too far over. Whoops. <laughs> that was the apartment. In yeah, I did. A, this is a screen grab I grabbed from it. You didn't send me this or anyways, Not this cool. is Romeo's distress. Yes. And so yes. who did these love illustrations? I love is this who you're going to do? Um, I would Gouge love away. to hire. I would love to hire Liz Gruesome again. I don't know if she will. Now, I don't know if you remember Ga Ghoul's Night Out, the uh, fest festival. No, that... I know the the cover band with Tibby X in it. Okay, that it was an all female different... Misfits. Oh, band. I interviewed them many yeah. many years. Yeah, ago. yeah, I you know, did. I, I I know who they are, but um, Ghoul's Night Out was a horror punk festival, and Liz right. used to do all the art dingbats, for it. right? Right, and I played I... dingbats with Green Jelly. Right. So you, you're familiar with it. And and I actually stayed over with Liz when I was uh, uh, on tour with the horror punk band. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. and that's how I first became aware of Liz and her brilliant artwork. So she did the poster for that. Yeah, I know. Isn't it great? I, I love think I have another there. one here. Yeah. Yeah. That's just so she gave me I gave her stills of of these are actually scenes in the movie. Mostly mm -hmm. I gave her stills and then she did illustrations and scanned them and then gave me the individual pieces so that I could arrange them however I wanted endlessly. I and love the reflection, the, the face in his head. Yeah. Well, that that's actually, it's not a reflection, but that's oh. just, that was the face of Dale that I just put there. I was like, try, I don't know what I was trying with. That I was kind of stupid. Mm -hmm. um, no, it's cool. Yeah. yeah, no, it was great. That's what you want to do. You get, you have, you hire someone to do a bunch of, that was a, that was a concept poster when I was working in, in the restaurant. That's, what That's I was on wondering. the back of, of something. I was always drawing and writing while I was at work. So I was <laughs> trying to be proactive. So this was one of the this was one of the early, early posters when I was trying to visualize what Romeo's distress would be. And let you know what? Oh, so this Let's, oh. let's hear what this is. Is this that one I, of your I, actors? That was in there. That was it. That was in there. Yeah. So that's Dale. I was watching Orange is the New Black and I saw Dale, the 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 antagonist, the main villain in I don't know if he's the villain. I guess technically yeah. he's the hero, actually. I don't know what you would call him. Uh 
he's you'll he have to watch in Orange and, is the New Black. I thought yeah. that was so fucking funny. That's so I sent that to him. I forgot that was in there though. That's so funny that that's there. <laughs> I Holy figured shit. it had some. Yeah, I thought that was the same guy. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, I I found some stuff in Orange is the New Black too. Like they filmed a scene in the um, in the uh, what would you call it? Community center that I grew up playing in, where Coheed and Cambria started out. A lot of they filmed a lot of stuff in, in Westchester and Nyack. Yeah, they did. This was at the Nyack Center. That's awesome. And I was like, oh my god, I was there. Used to be there every single weekend. And now isn't it's that on so TV. surreal? And you're like, what? There it is. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, this was the uh, very so that's first his business card that, for the that, character, right? Yes, and 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 it's very. I designed that business card. That that that's a bunch of insurance logos that have been <laughs> blended together into one insurance logo. It doesn't look very good. I don't like the way it looks now, at least. And then I foolishly put Dexter there because, like, yeah, he's going to do oh. some Dexter type shit. So let me put Dexter. That was the very first scene I shot of my feature, like ever. So that was like the be very beginning of that journey was on that day. Nice. So, well, then it was apt. So yeah, we'll just. I mean, we don't have to get it, guys. Right. It's on YouTube. Go watch it on his channel. Go watch it on the. You know, channel. it's this already is there. Hollow. This is. This is just Sleep like a, some that's previews under the, for you. Uh, under the bridge. I loved this set. I wanted to show that. That was a cool, that was a cool set. Um, that's that, you. That's me testing out blood splatter for when Jane dies. Gotcha. Spoilers. Yeah, there's some that's more. The basement torture scene. Basement torture scene. And there's your guy from. There's the color. It's so weird to see it in color. I'm right? so used to seeing it in black and white. True, true. Yeah, I liked this whole thing. This so you designed a whole graveyard, basically. Oh my god! Yeah. So uh, what That's happened impressive. was, uh, really quickly, in in uh, forty seconds or less. Yeah. We we shot five different graveyards. I wanted to shoot a whole scene in a graveyard. The problem was, the problem was that it was just incredibly unsafe. And eventually we did sneak into a graveyard at two o'clock in the morning with a shovel, no less terrified <laughs> yeah. that the police were going to catch us. Yeah. Thinking didn't didn't we you give gonna... one of a, a fuck you in the credits or something? I did. I, I gave, well, that was the sleepy hollow people. They like kicked us out for filming in there. Well, but when I close at six o'clock. I learned that when I showed up for a music video and it was closed already. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They are, they're super like strict and stuff. Understandably. So they don't want, it's a liability. I mean, it's the headless horseman cemetery. Like. We still, we snuck in there and we got some stuff. And then what I was like, look, like, what am I going to do for the end? So I was like, let's just go really stylized with it. And I built all that stuff. The 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 the, the crucifixes, the smaller crucifixes. Yeah, there was more behind the else. scenes, but I just picked out a few to throw in there. Yeah, no, I I love that cemetery. That's in my parents' backyard. That's awesome. <laughs> I, I totally watching the movie. I would never have known until I saw the behind the scenes. That's I'm, the beauty of black and white, man. That's the beauty of black I mean, and white and micro budget. And that's Ed how I want to go back you know? to it. I want to go back to it because I think I could do even more than what I did here. You know. There's that's Nana. That's Nana her from, from that movie. Now, now the body of Nana is not Nana. That's actually Dave Street dressed up as my grandmother. What? So Dave, yeah. So Dave Street is dressed up as my grandmother because we shot at his house. And then I just shot Nana's face, just her oh face. God. And then I would cut to Nana's face and then to Dave Street's body. So it's not the same person. Interesting. So, so only one half of, of grandma is played by Nana. That's funny. That's you. You that's you me. make a cameo. I do, and that's a long story that I won't tell here. But yeah, I yeah. basically, in the very last minute, decided to, when we lost an actor, we basically made up my character on the spot, mm. shot the ending, and then went back and I started to in, like shoot more scenes with my character, who doesn't make any sense apart from like what he does at the end. And I just was trying to weave the character in so it didn't feel like this last minute thing and that it felt it's a more silent like it was, role. It's a silent role and that's how it's supposed to be. So, okay. We did that. Okay. Now that's right. my documentary. Yay. Yay. Life uh, and slimes. So I guess I'll play a little trailer. I won't play the full trailer cause I'm trying to do it. We're, we're at two hours already. I'll do the short one. <laughs> I understand why there's so many addicts. You've got to be at 100 or 150 and then zero. Kind of garage is uh, the way to get healthy and fit in the 90s. <laughs> he and I share a 
common affliction? I think I heard of them at an AA meeting. People that came to haunted garage shows, I started seeing them in meetings. I thought you just had to be like fucked up to enjoy our music. You, you never know where help's going to come from. And in my case, came from Dookie Flyswatter. Dookie was an intricate part to me getting sober at the time. We'd never heard of the word sober. We're like, sober? What's that? Just his presence sometimes has been really good for people. Just knowing the man made it easier for me to deal with my own mental illness. Being bipolar was the perfect vehicle for this band. That was before medication. Mental is the other side of genius. I'm Bill Wilson, don't you fuck with me. I am the trendy king of Friday. I'm Bill Wilson, don't you fuck with me. I am the trendy king of Friday. Me and Dr. Bob like to sing it on a hook. Me and Dr. Bob form the whole blood of a book. Kiss me, Bobby, don't sound as movie stars are funny. Kiss me, Bobby, don't sound as movie stars are funny. And if you want to see us talk at length about that, watch Pizza Punk. <laughs> That's your show. That's right. I didn't know that uh, Dookie was sober and that he got yeah. people sober. That's, That's awesome, like dude. That's like a huge part of his legacy with people he knows in L.A. It's like. I had no idea, dude. For like I'm, so, I, I, years. I'm sober. I'm sober. I'm sober. That, that's awesome. I so, did not know that. I that's figured, great. yes, that would uh, appeal to the sober punk rockers as well. It's really cool. Yeah, it's, really, really it's a cool. big part of the story, so it's it's can't ignore it, and it's it's hard to dance around a little bit because it's like, well, it's supposed to be anonymous, but everyone gave gave themselves up anyway, so it's a uh, it's a you that's know, that's up to them, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As long as you're not outing someone, yes, that right. is true. That is true. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So yes, that's For a sure. big part of the story, uh, and that's my segue into. Asking you a little bit about what this is. Oh shit, we forgot all about this. Oh look, I mean, how do we really not nice talk job. about this? I mean, yeah, we're not. No, we we can't do it at length. <laughs> this will be a whole other episode, but that will be a whole other episode. And I'd be happy to come back and talk to you. To and length, we, but basically, yeah. in a nutshell, as nutshell as I could possibly get, elevator um, pitch. <laughs> it's just a very long gestating project that I have been working on since before anything I've ever done. And like I've over 10 years now, right? Over 10 years. But I mean, five of those years, I wasn't doing anything on it. Right. So, and I shot hours and hours of interviews with people. You know, it's funny at the time, nobody really knew who they were. And now more people know who these, some of these people are. So the interviews have actually grown in value, I guess, mm -hmm. in terms of knowledge value. And um, I don't know what the hell the project is going to look like. I'm still working on it and figuring it out and shaping it. But what I've been doing uh, is I've been sharing uh, my journey on Patreon and talking about like behind the scenes, like how like shooting yeah. interviews and just talking about stuff and showing a lot of unreleased for those footage. war fans like me. Yeah, you had dude, a whole like, negative gold on there. Just putting putting stuff out there that like I have literally just kept on hard drives and not let anybody seen. And um, I, one day, one day oh, that's back the movie the, will be your out. other movie. Yeah. Yes, uh, but one day the movie will be out. Um, people ask me about it all the time, and all I got to tell them is like, I'm just one guy, and this is one part of all of the things that I'm doing and I'm just, I'm trying to make it all happen. And it just happens on its own time. You know, we saw how fast gouge away get, went, came out, but this is like, this is something so beyond gouge away in terms of the scope and mm -hmm. it'll be a long time, but it'll come out. And um, well, I guess on topic with that, the misfits are playing riot fest this weekend. They're going to play walk among us. So awesome. I'm sure someone will stream it and I'll watch it later. Yes. You know. Yes. Uh, but that's that's cool i guess i think they play all those songs anyways so it's not like a big stretch uh, for them. there's a couple of songs that they have not brain played eaters yet. i would like to hear brain, brain eaters. eaters i think hate breeders they haven't played yet. really nike, nike a go go they haven't played yet um so, violent so world maybe oh, no, like did violent world maybe like five or six minutes worth of material that yeah, they haven't still, done they're yet doing it in sequential it'll be cool right. uh, yeah I'll, of course I'll, i'm not knocking them for it i think they should do every album Oh, I mean, if you're God, just gonna go with amazing. the legacy, just fucking do it, you know. Just do it. I mean, I, I would, I would truly, truly love that, and I would love to be there at Riot Fest. But I've already done it once, and again, resources are uh, yeah, man, just that's not a whole available. Commitment. Time. 
but uh, you know one day they will be and i will be back and oh, doing what a great riot great. fest isn't uh my chemical romance is playing one night um well i don't really I, give much about but like i'd totally see it if i was there I'd, yeah I'd check it out and isn't who's doing the other night nine inch nails maybe I don't know, but Guar is always there. So Guar is Guar's there. Is playing, I think the Descendants are there. Oh, Bauhaus the Descendants was there. Bauhaus was there. I think, there. yeah. Well, uh, he's in rehab again. I know. Um, and uh, yeah, it's going to be Riot Fest is going to be good if you can get down there. And again, it's also <laughs> if you can get down bargain. there, it starts tomorrow <laughs> today. Yeah, it's, it's a bargain too because th those tickets are one hundred fifty dollars as opposed to. You know, if you want to see the Misfits in the Pit, it's going to run you two hundred sixty-five dollars. I mean, yeah. So it's like, yeah, you know, I mean, like Dude, it's yeah, kind of a no-brainer. The descendants. If, the descendants are awesome. If a plane ticket's one hundred fifty dollars round trip, and Riot Fest is one hundred fifty dollars, and you could find someone's couch to crash on, which is what I did in twenty sixteen. Couch away. Couch away. <laughs> you can couch away. Sleep, sleep all day <laughs> if you want to. <laughs> all right so let's that let's let's place put a pin in it right yeah there. yeah yeah <laughs> um so let's close it on this because you sent me some of these in your behind the scenes so i i'm hoping we can talk about it i hope we're not spoiling anything oh yeah um that's a music video that i shot for steve zing and yeah speaking yeah, of I know, I, the documentary and the and, and the peep the connections you've made i'm sure yeah i that. i met steve because of the documentary steve has been a, a good friend for about 11 years now i've known steve and um i've you know uh, every once in a while he calls me up about something i come over to his house and we shoot a little video for you know music video or uh, we've done two music videos together now and some other things. And uh, is this and one out yet? This one is not out. I don't know no, what's going on. So. I sent them and there's a bunch of guests on this video uh, as well that you definitely will know. This is really funny because you could see the smile on Dan's face. Mm -hmm. They were trying so hard not to laugh. They were trying to be serious <laughs> when they were doing these gang vocals. Oh, okay. um, it was hilarious, dude. I don't know what the deal is with the music video. It's been sent to them and I think Cleopatra. And I think they're just waiting until the album is pressed. Cleopatra so I don't who know. put out the last, last Green Jelly record. <laughs> yeah, Cleopatra's like hot right now. They're doing yeah. everything. Yeah, I, I feel like I need studios. to submit my music to them because they'll Should. probably sign me. This is where um, the Crow Mags recorded their last album as well. Oh, yeah, that's right. And if I'm, I'm, if anyone's watching and you don't know who Steve Zing is, he plays in Danzig's band. And of course, he was Hell yeah, dude. in uh, Sam Hain. Sure so was. There's a huge legacy of brutality there. Absolutely. Nicest dude ever. Awesome dude. Awesome dude. Oh, yeah. So this is actually. So now we're at the end of the show. So now. I don't want we can't get too crazy with it, but this is the period where if you don't want to hear spoilers, leave the room. Right? Let's spoil clerks if we want to talk about anything more about that. Or should all we just I would leave say, it? All I would say is that I felt that the third spoiler act, alert, spoiler, spoiler alert, alert, spoiler, spoilers. The third act really fell apart, man. That's the bottom line. It just it fell apart. It did not. Um, Kevin Smith doesn't know how to end movies sometimes. <laughs> I love yeah. you, Kevin. That's why he just I, keeps making sequels. Yeah, I mean, Kevin, I love you. And listen, you're like a father figure to me in terms of like all the influence. Like you've guided me. Like I love you, man. But like I, sometimes you just you just don't like the way that you choose to end your movies is like it just doesn't jive for me personally. And I love you and I'll see your movies to the end of time and yada yada yada. But I I have story issues personally as an audience member, and I'm I'm entitled to my opinion, as I'm sure Kevin is to his. You know, Kevin. But you know what I like about Kevin? Kevin doesn't talk about the things that he that don't work for him. He keeps it to himself, and I really respect that a lot. And I just literally well, I, did the opposite. I, of that, I had but. no real expectations, so it was kind of like it is what it is. I don't really. There's nothing else I, out of to say out of five it. stars. I give it three and a half stars. Go see it. It's a Kevin Smith movie. Go you know? see it. It's a Kevin like, Smith movie for sure. There's there's so much great stuff. It's just that the story, like he's telling his life story, he's telling his Cinderella story, and he didn't finish it, and that's what uh, frustrates me. I'm like, 
why didn't you tell the best part of the story where have Randall sell his movie to Sundance or something? Yeah, that I don't know. Been... I didn't get that same impression as much. Like, I mean, I, I think it was just assumed that he did that his he thing did, that he and, did his and thing. Yeah. It, it, it lived on and, and it spawned all the, that's why you got to wait till the end of the credits. There's kind of a close credit scene sort of thing. Meta yeah, there's a nice thing. coda. There's a very there's nice a coda. coda. Very a sweet word. message from Kevin. And um, I, I really like it. And listen, I think Clerks 3 is still a very, very uh strong uh it'll give uh, you some emotions very much so yeah it's it's but it has story problems you know what it suffers yeah. from it suffers from a guy who is an auteur who is a singular vision and doesn't maybe doesn't have enough people weighing in on certain story things and i'm in fairness to kevin smith it's like this is my world these are my toys fuck you i'm gonna make the movie i want to yeah. make so exactly. i get that I get that. However, however, from a critical standpoint, from like a, I don't know, whatever standpoint, um, the the weight of the story is lost on a bunch of different levels based on some of the choices that were made. It was opinion. definitely more of a nostalgia piece than anything else. I mean, oh yeah, they Absolutely. were literally recreating the movie with the same actors, and it's like yes. And it's cool to see, but it's almost like a behind the scenes video, like a, a DVD extra half of it, you know, kind of is of like, of hey, we're doing a reuniting of the cast. You know, I'm very curious to know what happened to shooting clerks as a result or if this is tied in with shooting clerks, which was a biopic about Kevin Smith making clerks. Oh, really? Yeah. I didn't know. About and I, that. Yeah. Oh, my surprised. God. Yeah. There's like a whole thing. And Kevin was very supportive and good to those guys. But I'm it seems like maybe that their movie was very similar to Clerks 3. And I wonder hmm. if Clerks 3 coming out kind of stifled shooting clerks. I don't know. I, I don't know anything. That's just something I surmise, but who know who knows the ba the behind the scenes stuff? Well, I'll leave it with one antidote that I thought that I, I don't know if I ever say that right. Antic antidote is I. a punk band. Neither do antidote. I. Antidote is what I'm trying to say. Antidote. Antidote. I think antidote. That... Antidote. And antidote. Kevin, I'm in know. the same boat as you. You understand what I'm trying to say? Word. Yeah. Same thing with like debut. 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 That's phonetically, but debut. Debut. Oh, that's yeah. why I always say it wrong. It's debut. Yeah, the T is silent. No, but the A in the after the D is what I always mispronounce. It's debut. That's why I get it wrong. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Continue. Yeah. With what you're I just um, going on the whole meta thing. Now, they didn't go too deep into this, but I appreciated the updated Star Wars references because yeah. Rosario Dawson is in the show. That's funny, right? Right. And it's like, well, Kevin Smith had her in his movies first, and now she's part of the Star Wars universe, which is basically the topic of conversation of every Star uh, Kevin Smith movie. Kevin also plays a stormtrooper in. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. So he's so all over the Star Wars. Now it's like, of course they're going to make reference to the show that their own cast members are a big part of. Nate Dog hates the new Star Wars movies. He's so mad. Well, I no, saw but the, the show. Guy. I'm talking about the Mandalorian. Right, right. The Mandalorian. That, is that's great. the Mandalorian was way better than any new Star Wars movie. I agree. I agree. Loved it. Boba Fett was kind of. Eh, it was okay. Yeah, it was. I think what was cool Man, about no, Boba Fett cool. is that you don't know too much about Boba Fett, and when you do, it's kind of like not as cool anymore. Although I will say this, one thing I'll say, and I really, this is the last thing I'm gonna say because I know you got to go. I got to go. I will close with this huge missed opportunity in in Mandalorian. How do you not spend a whole fucking episode inside the Sarlacc pit? Give us the first episode of the Book of Boba Fett. The last time we see Boba. He falls into the fucking. We see pit. enough of it, I think. Though no, you, see, you like, don't think it's enough, dude. It's like five minutes, man. It's cool though. It's still I, it's that's cool. the one one of the cool things that they did with this show. You know what? I was annoyed. That set was gruesome, bro. They could have spent an entire fucking half hour of him like teaming up with another stormtrooper, and then they have like conflict over like some resource that they need, and then he winds up on this whole mini adventure just to get out of the Sarlacc pit. And like starts with him dreaming. He's dreaming about his father and then he wakes up and he's covered in goo. And then he realizes where he is. 
And then he takes like the oxygen from some dead stormtrooper. He puts in his thing and he's like exploring. Like you could have done a, you could have made such a meal out of the Sarlacc pit and they didn't do it. And that bums yeah. me out. Well, there's a new Star Wars show coming out. I, I don't know. I watched, um, I can't even keep them fucking together anymore. Obi-Wan Kenobi. Hey, oh yeah, here's what I'll say. Obi-Wan Kenobi featuring Flea, who ripped off Fishbone. <laughs> so full circle. Yeah. And in the very early 80s, and I'm talking about like 84 maybe, Flea was one of the original Green Jello fans. Really? When they were a Buffalo, New York band. That's crazy. Bill has a story about Flea following him around when he was like a teenager. And now yeah. he's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Now he's in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame for... Bro, it, it's a crime that Fishbone is not. It's a crime. Angelo, come on the show. Fishbone is red hot. And I think we did it. Yay! I came home from the movie with about five minutes to spare, and we did a whole show. It was effortless. Hey, did you see my Guar theme song yet? My no. Guar pod? Here, I'll, I'll end it with that. End it with that. That's a good All one. All right. Check out Guar Pod on Tuesday. We got Sleazy P. Martini. Von Esper out. I've never done that before. <laughs> Guar Pod comes from on Guar Pod. Guar Pod. Guar Pod. Guar Pod. Yeah.